Golden Globiates, welcome back. New year, new year, new t- new Tim, new Griff. Mm. I'm not really feeling it. I shaved no. my face, so that's new. It's true, and I did not shave mine. Yeah, so that's new. Yeah. Um, Fireworks. Yeah. What did, did you do anything yesterday for New Year? Not much. Hung around, made some beef tenderloin, nice rich red wine sauce. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm, yeah, who gives you know? Who gives a shit? Like New Year's is for people who only get drunk once a year. Yeah, <laughs> well, twice a year on St. Patrick's Day and New Year's. Right, 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 right. But yeah, I never gave a shit. Like I don't know. Have you ever had a memorable New Year's? Uh, I, I'd say so. You remember that movie with David uh, X Files guy? What's his name? Uh, no, I remember him, but I don't David, remember a movie. I, what's his name? David, David Duchovny. Duchovny. He did a movie called like Evolution or something like that. It was a dumb comedy. I think I remember that. And. I, I always liked New Year's Eve because they, my mom would make, like, punch, and it was the only time I got to drink punch out of the year, and then we'd get, like, shitty frozen snacks, you know, pizza rolls and shit like that. Yeah. Oh, my God. When you oven bake mozzarella sticks, it's the fucking worst, but I love that shit because I was, like, nine, yeah. and it was so exotic to my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> I'm glad I've already killed you. We yeah. just started. So that was always like, throat. and then we would get like, I would get to rent movies. Usually I'd get a John Claude, but I was like, I need some of that David Duchovny. Cause I used to watch X-Files. I want great show. I loved it. Uh, I don't love David Duchovny. I love yeah. X-Files. <laughs> so I, I, I got, I grabbed that movie. Me and my brother would rent a video game. So it was a fun day. Yeah. So I remember, I you know, I enjoy yeah. it. But now that I'm adult, it's like I don't give a shit. And people yeah. light off fireworks. Mill House is shooting all high off as guns. shit. They were shooting off guns where I live. Yeah, uh, yeah. The only one I remember, I I uh, rung in the New Year by myself in a hospital oh. uh, with a collapsed lung, recovering from emergency surgery and a collapsed <laughs> lung, stressing out how I was going to pay the bill for this. That was my most memorable New Year's. That's a terrible New Year's. Yeah. So yeah, fuck New Year's. Yeah, fuck New Year's. Speaking of fucking people, I got a confession to make. Oh. I killed Betty White. Oh no. Yeah, I did it. I did it. And when the real truth comes out and the history books are written, you'll understand why and you'll thank me. Oh. That's all I'm going to say about that. Griff. Yes. Have you heard a story about the tiger and biting the guy's hand off and he got killed? No. There was, I'm so furious about this story. They're, okay, there's the zoo, and there was this guy, a custodian. I hate where this is going already. And he, he he's like, they're like a third party. They don't work for the zoo. They just come in to clean. Mm-hmm. And he's got, it's at night, you know, to shut down. He's got to fuck with the tiger. He wants to pet the tiger. So a tiger's a wild animal, right? Yeah. So it grabs his hand, and it won't let go. So this fucking moron is like getting on on so they call the cops and you know all cops the whole the solution to every problem is shoot something well, oh uh, wow i wonder if you told the story for a particular reason but go on well they take one moment i will say they get one moment, do you have tranquilizer darts they're like no we don't all right we got to shoot the fucking tiger because you can see it's, it's on a on a camera you yeah. see this guy like, eh, and he's like i'm like how about just get a machete and chop his hand off fuck this guy uh hello Chop that fucker's hand like, off. So they kill an endangered species. Smart. So some fucking moron that we like. We need more of these guys. I, be- I guarantee you, this guy wasn't vaxxed. I guarantee <laughs> you. Fuck this guy. I would have chopped his. Fu- I would have shot his hand off if you had to shoot somebody. I mean, couldn't they have tried to like shoot the gun off to scare yes! the tiger? Yes, they could have, or they could have just like opened the door and tried to distract it. So it would run it toward and then to shut the door. Anything like, but no, it's like uh, we got to shoot this fucking tiger. As we'll learn in this movie, I feel like you told that story for a reason. Like our characters lack so much creativity; every problem is solved the same way. 
by Balsack taking out his gun and pointing it at everybody. That's all he can do. And we just we lack like creativity in the world today. There's always that story of like somebody falling into like you know the monkey pit or the ape yeah, pit or it's something. Some dumb kid. And it's like it's such a hard thing because it's especially when it's like a kid or something. But still, it's just like come on, we can't be fucking killing these animals at any time. We have restricted animals and where they can exist so much so we're putting them in cages and we're still just like we're gonna kill you now even though we put you in this nice little domicile what the fuck's wrong I mean, if, there's, if there's if there's too many of anything it's people exactly so just let the kid die yeah let the kid die keep an emergency machete near the cage just chop the fucking idiot's hand off when he gets right. it ripped off what the fuck uh, is wrong with us? Where's that Tiger Joe guy? Wait, he he killed his tigers too. I don't know. I, just, I avoided that. That right? was such a mess. Uh, I'm so glad that's over with now. They they released a second season because speak, you got, got a strike with all Speaking of Netflix, I finished Squid Games. I finally got around to watching it. Hey, you him. did. Yeah. That's a modern TV right there, bro. Yeah, it is. How'd you feel? I enjoyed it for the most part. Okay. I think that's the next evolution I'm going to go for when I get my fight ring going. Yeah. Like, eventually, I'm going to get tired of that. I think Squid Game is the next step. Well, as we've learned through modern wrestling, there's just twinks everywhere now. They're just yeah. small people. So if you go the Squid Game route, you don't need that physique as much. Right, and it would make sense because they play children's games. So the more childlike the people look, AEW the more authentic the it becomes. Games. This all works. Yeah. yeah, this makes sense. So I think that's where I'm going. Maybe in 2022, I'm going to go that route, Squid Games. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, modern uh, media because I watched a modern movie as well that Gosling movie Drive yeah well it came like 10 years ago yeah it? well it's still modern compared to what we usually do this is an I was. it's funny movie. you bring that up I was oh. thinking remember that guy we know that had the, he got the drive yes, I was thinking about him the whole time <laughs> yeah we knew a guy and it's like if you're a teenager, I'll let you. This guy was in his twenties. He got the satin jacket with, Come, with Murray, the scorpion. Murray, we fucking foam at the mouth <laughs> at the chance of getting a skull jacket, a satin green skull well, that's jacket. Totally different. <laughs> Don't even put it in the same category. Okay, okay. But yeah, we knew a guy that had the drive jacket. It was embarrassing. So right off the bat, one forty, I was like, okay, these guys get it. Yeah. And it's a movie called Drive, so you're expecting a lot of driving. Not a whole lot of driving. You get a point there. Problem, Gosling as a as a badass, like yeah. soft boy, not doing it at all for me. Yeah, I can I can agree with you on that. Uh the like I loved how they mixed in the ultra violence, but him like relating to humans, it was just boring. It moved at a whole I thought the whole point was he couldn't relate to humans. Didn't he just stand oh, no. around with a toothpick in his mouth all the time? He did a lot of that, but he was trying to get in with the lady who had a kid and right. he related you know, he was getting along great with the kid and then the husband comes back in the picture. It was just a very underwhelming movie. Like, there was really good parts, but the pacing was awful. I didn't care about any anything. Was it 90 I, minutes? I told you it was a minute 40, oh, or an hour 40. Okay. Yep. So. One strike <sighs> against it. It's like it's like a solid two out of five. It was just okay. I was expecting so much more. But I don't know why I was expecting more. Yeah. I think people got. I mean, Satin Jacket guy you had me hyped on it. I mean, what about that Satin Jacket? <laughs> yeah, but with the you scorpion? know, you saw the guy who was wearing the Satin Jacket. You yeah, should have known yeah, by then. Yeah. I'm not gonna. Take I don't advice. know. Was, I got another new thing. For, whoa, whoa, here we go. I watched the, New Year, New Us. I watched the first episode of that Boba Fett show because I loved Boba Fett when I was a little kid. Okay, I really need to uh, dissect that for a second because okay. he has one fucking scene where he's just in the background. And I hate that they're going to ruin it like they did with Han Solo and that race thing he did, the something express or whatever it was yeah. called. And they did the story, and it's just like, it's so better, so much better as a myth, like an old West story. Well, then you you wouldn't like this because oh, I they, they anticlimactically reveal how he survived. Of course. He just sh shot a fucking fight. Spoiler alert if no one's watching, if it's not watching this yet. Uh, I, the... Oh, first of all, the guy playing Boba Fett and his like right hand woman, they're both like pushing sixty. Like, yeah. Literally. Yeah. So like, he's kinda he's he's got he's, the Boba Fett guy's not fat, but he's like like when you get older you get thicker. Like yeah. he so he doesn't look like that great. And okay, the whole point why people liked Boba Fett, because he was supposed to, he's basically supposed to be like Clint Eastwood's Western character in in the Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. He's immediately a good guy. He wants to like like he was a total badass, like this guy's ruthless. He'll fucking do anything. Now he's like, 
I want to rule Jabba's crime empire with respect instead of fear. It's like, that. what the fuck's going on here? I just don't like it. And I, then the fight scene was atrocious. It was like straight out of the Hercules 90s show. Nice. It was, like, it was super slow. And like, uh, uh. And okay, and you go. And then I go. It was like really awkward. I, because there are elderly people doing these fight scenes. I immediately got the dread effect from it. The Judge Dread version, where it's just mask off for half the movie. Yes! I hated that when I saw the commercials for that, and they were like, here's Boba Fett. I was like, fuck you. Like, yes! I, I want the mystique. I'm glad you brought that up. Exactly. Because you never saw his face in any of the other movies. Why? This I, one immediately takes it off. Takes it off. All the commercials I've seen for it, yeah. it's him without the mask on. And I'm just like, that's the only thing. Even the Mandalorian I, doesn't take his helmet off ever. Oh. But Boba Fett does. I, ju- I just don't. I don't like how we're treating stories nowadays. It just fucking sucks. Okay, mm-hmm. chop the hand off. Let's throw the. Let's. You know what? <laughs> if you're sticking your hand in that cage, you're going down with it. So you exactly. know. Exactly. Fuck this. We got a lot of movie to talk about. Though. We this got a lot. Of, this, if, this is gonna take us a while. Yeah. All I got to say is, if you're fans of our Ginty and Seagal episodes, you're gonna love this one because we get nothing but fucking hate oh for the main God. character of this movie, Robert Carradine. Robert Lewis, Sharon. the rapist, yeah. the yeah. lovable rapist, apparently. Well, yeah, he's a rapist, except with the, the out is, if you can make a woman come, you're not a rapist. Yeah. So that's how he got out of it in Return, uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Jesus Christ. She was that's like, the worst message you could be sending to <laughs> frat boys. But that's such, that's, it's boomer humor. That's totally, like, yeah. all boomers were rapists, basically. Yeah. Date rapists. Yeah. You know, like, I, this, I mean, didn't that kind of shit happen in Animal House? Wasn't there some, like, um, some creepy kind of shit going I on there. don't remember I didn't really watch that one yeah. I think there was a scene with tits in it and I think I just knew where that was and I just you know and you'd have to because your mom wouldn't let you see that exactly yeah uh, th- well but hey this is a new year we decided to start off with a Golden Globus movie you guys what? have been giving a shit well no nobody cares yeah no but it's been at least eight months since we've done a <laughs> Golden Globus go figure we're Golden Globus theater and we haven't done one in months and we're not going to do any after this we're going to go back to not doing them yep but we 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 felt like we owed you this because like six seven months ago you you follow me on Twitter you heard the whole story when I lost my power that hellish six days of no power we were supposed to do this movie and I couldn't do it because I couldn't watch it obviously because I had no power and then when we were gonna do it Sonny Chiba died and we're like we gotta pay on it oh and Sonny we Chiba. did Street Fighter holy yeah. fuck that movie was so much better than this exactly. movie I, oh yeah oh man and then we just forgot about it we tried to push it out of our memory. And then I was like, you know what? We we got to honor our word. You were driving back home. You saw the Billy D. Williams because we do have Billy D. Williams yeah. sign in Detroit. Yes. And you saw that. And you're like, oh. Billy the D. Williams. Yeah. Because the D's for Detroit. We yep. all know that. And, of course, you were like, shit, we got to do number one with the Right. Bullet. We got to do it. We promised it. You know, cause there's, uh, there's probably one guy out there who's like still like, are they going to do it this week? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this week, mm. every time a new episode pops up, <gasps> do they surprise me with the Billy D. Wi- or the number one with the pull? No, just 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 another Walker Texas Ranger tippy tap. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, the- I I caught an episode. God damn this this is a great opening <laughs> segment. I caught a second of an uh, uh, Walker Texas the other day, and it was like this abusive stepfather just like backhanging his son, and the son. Oversold the fuck out of it. Kid flew through the air and was like spinning. Was it in slow motion too? It, of course it was. <laughs> and that awful Walker slow motion was super pixelated. It's uh, so amazing. <laughs> all right, all right. Number one with a bullet. Number one with a bullet. Uh, yeah. I, I this movie had to have been written for Robert Ginty because the the star of this movie is repulsive. There's no redeeming quality. Zero. Nick Balsack's his name. Yes. Nick Berserk Balsack. Yes. <laughs> I hate this guy. I think I can't believe I actually hate somebody more than Ginty. I might this guy might take the the top seed. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a full hate episode when you have five and a half pages of notes <laughs> where you're just tearing this guy apart, and that's where we're at today. Right. This is this is an hour forty movie, and yet there's so much notes because every scene, Robert Carradine's like, you know, this is what I would do. So it's what my character would do. He's an alcoholic. He's abusive. He's a stalker. He's well, he's a lovable. Abuse of stalking alcoholic. Oh my god. Anyways, yeah, um, this movie was the, the part was originally written for Jim Belushi. He punched up the script, but he had a prior commitment or something, couldn't do it. Mm. So it probably, I don't know, could it have been worse with Jim Belushi? I don't know how it could mean worse. Was he the Animal House guy? 
He's the brother of the Animal House oh. guy. Yeah, it would probably be worse then. He's a... Uh, he had a show. Everybody loves Jim or something. Oh, like I, that. I yeah, I remember oh, watching that. Well, that's, well, that's everybody. Loves, as every well, that's everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> I don't know, everybody loves somebody, according to Jim. Is according, that according to Jim, that was Jim? it. Yeah, yeah, according to Jim. Yeah, I guess he sells weed now. That's his big thing. Uh, everyone sells weed now. Yeah, they got their own strains. Kellen's We're gonna get our. Oh, by the way, <laughs> for the new year, I just want to tell this. You have, you didn't hear this from me. <laughs> Cryptocurrency, Golden Glow Box. <laughs> invest early, people. Golden Glow Box, and we're, we're, we're and we're uh, looking into N- was it NT- NFTs. NFTs. We're looking into yep. those. Yep, we're looking into those. As soon as someone tells me what they are, we'll start doing them. But what you, is on your dish soon? Catheter time, <laughs> trailer time. All right, people, we're gonna find out what happens when you team the only black man in space. With a sex pervert who's great at eating peaches. Here it is. You asked for it. No, you didn't. Number one with a bullet. You should have froze. It's not like we didn't tell him, right? Nick and Frank are special cops. <laughs> doing a dirty job. They made their reputations the hard way. They earned them. With style. I ain't afraid of no jive cop. Finesse. I am not your normal cop. And determination. People told us you like to talk when you get high. Are we high enough yet, Bobby? I'm gonna throw up! Technically, you'll be throwing down. There's a new mob moving into the city. Pull over to the side of the road and free! Told you, don't say freeze. It only kicks him off. They're after the man at the top. We haven't got a shred of evidence to prove he even kicks his dog. And the higher they get... You a dead man, berserk! The harder the climb. And the homicide hit for me? You are number one with a bullet! Number one with a bullet. Starring Robert Carradine, Billy D. Williams, and Valerie Bertinelli. Number one with a bullet. All right, we know you love that trailer, but enough fun. It's time for some facts. Cold hard facts, Murray. That's all we're about here. Tell it like it is. If you don't like it, you, you don't like facts. Yeah, you can just get the fuck out. Yeah. You know, somebody, some sassy motherfucker wrote me the other day, and he said, uh, you guys realize you can listen to a podcast and pee at the same time? I've been buying catheters every week because you keep telling me to buy caths. It's like... I pee while I listen to you now. Like on himself? I don't know how he pees. He didn't mention a toilet, so maybe that's what he's doing. Jug he uses? Maybe it's a jug. Jar? Maybe he's a trucker. Ah, it could be. Yeah. Well, I I think if you're a trucker, catheter would be the perfect thing to have. I think catheter would be. I mean, you had the little IV, the the same shit that gave Airwolf. That was actually trucker pee. (laughs) Trucker pee. That really gets you going. It fucks with your mind. Fucks there's with so much. Mind. There's like fucking speed in it and all this shit. And <laughs> Red Bull injections and pastrami and nacho cheese sandwiches and quiz. All righty, all right. All right, let's get into this movie. We start out with the smoothest of jazz. Boom, pachinka, boom, pachinka, boom, pachinka, boom. You see Billy D. Frank, not yep. to be confused with Frank from Samurai Cop. That's all right. He didn't have half the facial expressions that Frank Frisman. No, right Billy D. Like you said, he's here to smile and collect a paycheck. Right, smooth, yeah, he's doing a Wings Hauser. He's yeah. just floating in the scene, floating back out. Yeah, I love him. I thought he was fun. No, he, he he's got a great laugh in this. Movie. I, I want. I forgot to bring this up on the opening, but I was positive before I researched this movie. You know. Scanning IMDb a little oh, bit. Oh, don't worry. We filled out the IMDb. We'll <laughs> right. hit you with those facts. I was positive that this was a ripoff of Lethal Weapon because it has the same dynamic. It's got the crazy white guy and the smooth, chill black Isn't that guy. How we came onto this movie too? Yes. Yeah, that's right. But here's the here's the fact, Griff. We're all about facts today. Here's the fact, Jack. This movie came out a week before. A week before Lethal Weapon came no out. No shit. So this is well, my. That sounds like a Golden Globus marketing. Well, exactly, because this is what I think happened. I bet the the script for Lethal Weapon was getting shopped around. Menachem Golem read it, was like, "I'm not paying for this. You write something like this." And yeah. he wrote. He had some. He had probably had Golem's nephew 
write the fucking like script. All right. Because this this is such a blatant ripoff of the, the, the lethal weapon dynamic. There's no way there's this this has happened at the same time. Yeah. You know. Except Billy D is no longer a family man. He is a fucking hound. But unlike last week's movie where Big Trouble bombed with the much superior movie bombed and Golden Child uh, made tons of money. This was the opposite effect. The Superior Lethal Weapon was a huge success. Yeah. This movie bombed. All right, so we're in the jazz club. We're fucking rocking out. We got a beautiful. Well, we're baseline. not rocking. We're smoothing it. We're smoothing out. <laughs> <laughs> so smooth. We see fucking Kenny G in the audience. He gives a salute to. Fu- oh my to, god! To, with to, that crunchy noodle hair, right. he's just vibing along with it. <laughs> That's how good Frank is. Remember, he's a cop. This yeah. is what he does on his spare time. This is just for fun. This right. is to relax. This is to express himself. Right. He's got a little creativity in him. He would show up at the tiger cage and say, well, it sounds like you're going to lose a fucking hand He tonight. would just come up to the tiger and go, hey, baby, let go. And you're the right. tiger would just let go. He would put his hand out, and the tiger would put his paw on his <laughs> hand, and he would just stroke it so gently. And then with his little <laughs> mouthpiece from his trumpet, do 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 and the tiger would just go to sleep. Right, yeah. Why didn't they call Billy D? I I don't know. God, I hate our police force. Yes. Why were the police involved in that? This is why... P- Never mind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this movie... It's, it's, it's upsetting. A beautiful creature died. Exactly. And not even just so some Japanese guy can get an erection. <laughs> this was just for nothing. <laughs> so, smooth jazz. And he's, there's a lovely lady in the audience. She's just swooning. She's oh, just, oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. There, there's just multiple women in there, right. but there's one at Billy D's private table right. made for eight people you know the big right. round with the round booth right. and everything so he's just he's get a saunter over there after his set and this woman is just going back and forth they're ripping it they're rhyming it they're free- freestyling all over the place and he's telling her about jazz and she's like i'm more of a classical girl i like that Tchaikovsky shit i like flight of the bumblebee you know and he's like well that's the funny thing and then he works it into a way where their two passions fuse right he's like look did you know? I mean, yeah, Bach, he had his shit, but but Beethoven, that was straight jazz, baby. He was the smooth. He was a he was a Kenny G of his time. He was Kenny B. Mm-hmm. And she's like, really? And then who? Then it's we're okay. five minutes. Like we're, we're we're like we can't wait to watch these two fuck. That's how like how great this. this I moment imagine is. this is like watching you beat Battle Toads. It's just like <laughs> the perfect piece of art. Like it was looking like she was gonna resist. He brought it back around. They're both having a great time. There's no hostage in this situation. Well, she, well, she goes. She says like, how come how come you can't do this full time? Like baby, this don't pay the bills. Yeah, I'm a very cop. real. And then the she's like, don't pay the bills. And then she's like, A C A B. And he's like, he's like, Ugh. he's like, he's, but he's like, I, I'm gonna work it. I'm Billy D. I All cucumbers are bountiful. <laughs> yes. And then a plate of cucumbers came out. And then a total bastard cop shows up. Yeah, it, it should have been a record scratch moment where right. the jazz just stops and it goes cold in. water on the boner. It's oh just like, hey there. What's going on? He's like grab pawn at the fucking uh, celery sticks they got on well, their fucking table. I talked about how they did the round booth for 10, and he grabs a chair from the far end, a bar stool, and drags it across the floor. So it's just, Eah! and then he fucking sits up on there. So he's got this bar stool towering over, looking down pulling on them. Pulling a cigar. Yeah, pulling a total fucking skull. He just needed that little Nang Chen in the back, a little scorpion tail maybe, anything. He's got this awful, like, floppy hair, Tom Cruise wannabe Robert Carradine. God, I hate this man so much. (laughs) The worst Carradine brother. And so he sees his his, uh, partner about to get laid, (laughs) and he can't handle that because— Because he's not getting laid. He's he's got a spurn lover back at home. Right. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. He's a fucking horrible human being. But he won't internalize anything. He can't go into the deprecation he's totally, tank. Yeah, he's totally unself-aware. Uh, 100%. He thinks he's great. He's like, why don't people like me? Because you're a piece of shit, Nick. Oh, no. It's more like people love me, but some people, are they don't get it. I, they don't, I, yeah, I, I don't like, people don't get me. He's a total narcissist. Yeah, we do. You're a douche. Yeah. You're a ball sack. Nick ball sack. Yeah. So he's just like. Popping the fucking peanuts and shit out of the dish, like kept trying to catch her in his mouth, missing. Did you tell her about the story? Because this is how he's going to get this woman out of the picture. This is right. how he gets off by making sure his friend doesn't have any fun tonight. So he's going on. Be like, oh, you're not just a good cop. 
You're the fucking best cop. You remember that time we showed up uh, and there was that kid with the fucking squirt gun and you shot him in the face? That was a beautiful shot. Yeah. That kid had it coming. He was asking yeah, for it. Yeah, he's like, don't worry. He goes there. Don't worry. He held his ground. He held his ground. He did say, I held my, I'm holding my ground. I'm standing my ground. And then Billy D. Frank, he's just got this boy. He's used to it. This ain't the first time he's been cock blocked by, by Nutsack, Ball Sack. Oh, yeah. He knows what's happening. And she's like, I have to leave. Then walks off. And then uh, we've learned that not only is he obsessed with his ex-wife, Nick is obsessed with a drug dealer that named Acosta. Yeah. For as far as we know, is a pillar of this community. But right. Nick's like, I know this guy's a drug dealer. I know. Nobody can get anything. This guy's clean as the driven snow. Yeah. So Nick is trying. Nick? Yeah, he's Nick. Okay. Nick is like, I need to get I need to get Frank. We need to get down over there. So Frank's, of course, going to call him out be like, you need it. Relax, right. just because you're not getting any from your wife who divorced, like separated from you two fucking years ago. You're stalking her. I should probably arrest you. You won't set her free. You won't give her that divorce that she's been begging for. Uh, yeah. It's like, you know he's the type of friend who's just keeping his distance because if you got too close to Nick, you would, you would punch this motherfucker's teeth out. But we learn this is how Nick kind of rationalizes it. He he has trouble with his wife because he's a piece of shit. But it's he's like it's because I'm obsessed with the Costa because I have to get I'm obsessed with my job. Right. No, you're a piece of shit, Nick. He's using it's like the the Bible people and uh you know casting spurs on fucking gays or something. It's like he finds any excuse in the book to be like, this is why my marriage is fucked right. up. Once I'm, too, I get... I'm too good a cop. I'm too committed exactly. to my job. The world needs me. L.A. needs me. What's the L.A. population in 1987? There was a dip at that time. Oh, there was a dip. Yeah, because there was like an earthquake. Oh, shit. So, That's right. I saw that movie. Yeah, we lost about 3,000 people to that. They got swallowed up right in the San Andreas Fault. Oh, shit. There was about... I'm going to say 5,237. And he is responsible for every single yeah. one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. The, the city would collapse without Nick Balsack. Exactly. Nick Balsack is a commodity to this town. Yes. He keeps the water running. So he's like, look, motherfucker, I'll get my wife back. But for now, we got to figure out what Dacasa is up to. Right. So they do an illegal stakeout at Dacasa's mansion. They're, they're like right by like five feet away from the gate. Yep. And uh, we get to we get our first glimpse of our quote unquote villain, well, yeah. Tacosta, just playing a nice round of tennis. I gotta say, right. his form was dog shit, but his uh, <laughs> partner's form, great form, and oh. especially with those oh. awful rackets oh. back in the day. She had some great form. Murray, what are you doing? Are you turning the sexual? Yeah, I'm always. That's my job. Oh, okay. Hey, we got a pervy audience. I gotta give them what they want. True. So we get we get the classic uh, '80s blonde babe, and he's just there. They finish up because uh, Monty, his right hand man, yeah, he's like, "Boss, Pogue's here to see you." So he's like, "All right, babe, I got to stop this." He goes into his his library, his office. She, she is very disappointed about yeah. it. How am I supposed to uh, like please myself? And he's like, "Why don't you read a book? Please your mind." So he goes to his uh, his study and meets Pogue, his hitman. I like Pogue. I yeah. feel like they did him dirty in this movie. He could have been a lot better. And they're look. He's he's trying to I get a hit. He's, he's they're talking about Nick. He's like, look, this fucking cop's on my ass. It was what well, it was a big drug deal coming in, I think. And it no, was what, like we need to keep Nick. Well, no, at I think bay. what it was is there was a, a Boudreau was gonna Chance uh, he, Boudreau he, his. his I guess his first hit, man, because Boudreaux was also a hit, man. He took a chance on he took a chance on Boudreaux, and he shouldn't have because Boudreaux is going to turn state's evidence because he got arrested. He's going to oh. he's going to give the whole blow the whole deal. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. he's talking to his second man, Pogue. Yeah, Lee Sing, Shane McGowan, Lee Singer, the Pogues, mm -hmm. part time hit man. He's like, take care of this guy for me, and he's like, I'll take care of this Nick guy for you too. No, no, no. I got him under control. Yeah, like they needed him to be around because he becomes his alibi. Yeah. It's like if Nick's around constantly watching him, then it's like, I wasn't doing anything. My hands are tied. Right. Cut to Nick goes for the – he does this every day, I'm guessing. Goes to his, his uh, ex-wife, Teresa, played by Valerie Bertinelli, who's most famously known for being Eddie Van Halen's wife. Yep. And uh, – Immediately I, starts jiggling the handle. This bitch, she changed the locks again. Right. I mean, come on. 
But she she's cool. She lets him in. He, he barges in, basically. Well, yeah, she she opens the door with the chain, but she didn't do it quite right. So he manages to pry it open. He forces himself in. She's like, you can't come here. It's like two in the afternoon. And he's like, oh, you prepared for a big date? Is that why you're all dressed up like this? Why are you dressed like a whore? Is that why you're dressed like a whore? Where's my walleye? Where's my walleye? And she's like, what? Uh, that, that, that fish you caught? I mean, I, Yeah, biggest fish I ever caught. And uh, she's like, I don't know. I took it because it was a tacky piece of shit. Yeah. First of all, it wasn't real. It was one of those talking, singing fucking things. It's tacky as shit. You've been gone for two years. Why don't you just take it? Well, I'm still working on my apartment, all right? I got, you know, I'm figuring out the feng shui of it. Yeah. What do we got over here? Are you cooking oysters? Do I smell oysters? Is that champagne on the table? Is that the underwear, the sexy <laughs> underwear I bought you that you never wore for me once? I bought these white cotton panties for you, and you just let them just get some other guy sniff on them. What the fuck, you fucking whore? And now we're wondering why. Oh, gee, I wonder why she doesn't want to be with this guy. Mm. And he just storms out. He's like, take your drying panties somewhere else. <laughs> so she immediately locks the door. Triple bolts it. It's like, I'm, 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 I couldn't call the cops because he's a fucking cop. They're not right. going to do anything. They're going to go, oh, that's ball sack for you. Right. Always stalking. So he goes outside. There's children playing. He whistles to a child like a dog. Like, <laughs> Don't. Got to be careful. And with then- these. <laughs> Millie is injured and Millhouse is basically tempting her. And so this little girl runs over to him. She's his informant. He's such a when he can't stalk her himself, he has a little girl stalk her. He's like, "What's going on, kid?" And she's like, "Oh man, this guy came over yesterday. Fucked the real good. I saw everything." Oh, what was he driving? Corvette, I think. Candy red Corvette. Mwah. Little girl did a chef's kiss. Like, come on, you're eight. Yeah, she's like, I can get why. I can see why she's fucking him. Yeah. Why, why is she fucking? Uh, him? suit. Better hair. He has a sweet little side name chain thing going on. <laughs> Love it. Sleeveless gloves. Have you even worn sleeveless gloves, Nick? Balzac? No. Yeah. Get fucked. This yeah. guy's the real deal. Give me my twenty. And he gives her he's like, I don't you get change for fifty? Yeah. She's a kid, of course she does. It's like I'll get back to you. Yeah. So he gets in his car and he turns it around to the just a couple houses further down. And apparently Nick does this. And this is a special uh, uh, side of, uh, you know, a real piece of shit. I imagine your dad probably did something like this. <laughs> he drives with a cooler full of fucking long necks. Yeah, I think my dad would do something. Yeah. Like and he's got a system. I actually, I'll tell you off the air, but I have a fucked up cooler story. Oh, involving God, my dad. no. Okay. <laughs> and I don't. Oh, man. And so... <laughs> and so... <laughs> God damn, you got me stunlocked here. And so we... Grabs out, and we see it's a Bud Light. Yeah. He's watching his figure, you know, and wants yeah. to stick it out in those 31 size jeans. So then he goes into his glove box and pulls out a fucking Coca-Cola label. Yeah. And pastes it on. Yeah. He so, does a shitty job of it, too. He really did. So this is his thing. He likes to drink and drive. Yeah. Well, you could do that in the 80s. Yeah, It was, it was acceptable. Yeah. And then just as he's doing that, he noticed he sees that Corvette... Pulling up, he's like, all right, I'm going to go fuck with this guy. So he's like, excuse me, sir, do you know this woman? He's like, yeah, I'm dating her. I'm her doctor. And I feel it's my responsibility to tell everybody about her condition. Mm. AIDS. <laughs> and he's like, uh, what? I yeah, heard. I'm sorry. You know, she's got AIDS. I get, I get checked out if I were you. Yeah. And we're supposed to be laughing about this. This, this is supposed to be a funny moment. This is a punch. I mean, there was a drummer in the background who did a rim shot. So yeah. not good timing. Yeah. So this guy's his only crime is he's dating a woman. If it if if the timing were right, I think the joke would have landed. But Ballsack has no timing. Like they didn't even like they've it's, I feel like they even knew this guy was a piece of dog shit because they don't even do a thing where they make the boyfriend an asshole. Like he's just a normal guy. Mm-hmm. And he's just like Like I said, uh-huh. suit. Full of dignity, respect to, <laughs> respecting of women. He went up to the little girl and said, that was a good way you kicked that ball and gave her $10 and a pat on the head. Yeah. That's respectable. Whereas fucking Nick sticking, stiffing her out of her you know, $20 informant fee. Right. Like, what the fuck? This guy's salt of the earth. So we're, 
10 minutes in, I want Nick dead. Yeah. I'm on DeCosta's side. Team we're DeCosta. 35 minutes in this episode, and we're 10 <laughs> minutes into the movie. So yeah. good luck, everybody. Yes. All right. So now we're going. We got to figure out something that's going on. We got to have a scene where we see them being cops. Yes, that's it. That's the yeah. words I was going for. So we're at like a, a, a fair. It's a the carnival, church fair. And we see a woman reading a book. A book called A Sensual Woman. Mm. And I'm like, well, there's something familiar about that woman. Yeah, she had great white curly hair. <laughs> yes. Attached to... <laughs> Betty White-like hair. Betty White-like hair. R.I.P. Attached to a, a piece of shit, because it's Nick. <laughs> Nick is in drag. Apparently, we have no female cops in L.A. at this time. Yeah. So we need to have our cop in drag. And here's the other thing that you know... Nick went full, or I should say Robert Carradine went full Seagal on the set of this movie because he's like, yeah, you know what? I'm so fucking good looking as a woman that uh, find me a gentleman to come over and hit on me. And it's this guy choking out a foot long dog. And he's like, hey, hey, babe, would you like to choke down? It's Dennis Miller. Hey, babe, <laughs> would you like to <laughs> choke down this foot long? <laughs> choke down on this foot. I haven't seen a foot long this big since. And then it's just some obscure <laughs> reference. <laughs> And he's like, beat it, pal. And it's like, ugh. And then we see our man Frank. He is playing a blind man with the most Halloween USA beard on. It's like so bad. And we see a little fat kid like he, rob him. He's doing like a bakery table. Yeah, it's like funnel cakes or something. Yeah. It's just, and a little fat kid comes up, grabs a funnel cake, flips off the blind man. That kid was the best part of this uh, whole scene. <laughs> yeah. he, he He killed it. He brought and his then for some reason, because there's a drug deal. This, this, is a, this is a drug deal, a drug this boss. This is the most ridiculous fucking deal there's ever. There's a guy dressed as a bandito with a fucking... Okay, it was a Halloween thing. Yeah. Poncho. We need to point that okay. out. It was a Halloween thing. Okay, so that's why the other... Because everyone's in drag. Cause they, he, yeah, there's he, a lot of people. His hench is in drag, too. Yeah. I didn't get that. Like, Why does he need to be in drag? Right. Like, I, I was very confused about this, but... I think it was supposed to be a Halloween thing. So one guy's the Frito Bandito. He's got a poncho on, and the other guy's in drag. And they're not doing anything, but apparently that's enough to just pull a gun out on these guys because they're freeze, asshole. All right, Murray, come on. There was there, There's this very special game. Oh, of my God. I can't believe oh, you're right. I yeah. About yeah. This. I so blocked it out. I know you're right that like <laughs> Nick would pull that kind of shit, but no, they do. Yeah, okay. They suspect them of being suspicious because he's constantly stopping and doing like the evil pure back and forth thing yeah. where you barely move your head, but your eyes are just darting like a tennis match. And so he walks up to this bottle toss game, and, I mean, Ballsack knows a guy who can throw a fucking ball. And so he's, he's look Yeah, he's Ballsack. Yeah, he's Ballsack. So he's looking at this guy's form and everything, and he's like, oh, he's hot-dogging it. He's got hot dogs on the mind, too, because the guy was offering a foot long. Yeah. He's like, he's hot-dogging it, because he's just like, oh, I missed again. And then behind the tent, we see there's this other gringo who's picking up the balls, and he's shaking them. Like they're coconuts with something inside, or I don't know. And then he gets that one, and it's like he <laughs> screws off. And then you see a little baggie with powder. He dips his tongue in, rubs rubs his, his tongue, dips his pinky in, rubs his gum. Does and it- then he peers back into the bottle toss game, <laughs> yeah. where everybody can see him and goes, "It's good shit." <laughs> like, and they go, what? "That's our move." That's the, when they hear, when they hear it's good shit, they know to move. So the cops- and it's it's even worse because behind the tent. There's a walkway. There's people. There's people right. everywhere. What the fuck was this? Dr- this is supposed to be a drug deal happening right yeah. under their noses. Yeah. All right. But yeah, Ballsack comes up with a gun. Hey, I saw that freeze asshole. You hot dogged it. I knew you could hit those bottles. So Frito Bandito goes one way. Guy in drag goes another. The guy doing the ball toss thing whips out a shotgun. because He needs somebody to die. So Nick shoots him, kills that guy, and then they split up. So Frank goes after Frito Bandito, and uh, of course, one drag guy has got to follow another. Yep. So they go after, they split up. Yep. So inside, Nick has chased and cornered down uh, the, the the other person in drag, and they're like on the stage. They're doing like a whole church uh, it's, it's casino like a, floor. Yeah. And I think they're doing like a bingo type thing. Pastor was reading out the bingo numbers. Yep. And then the cop. This is where I I could I see I believe that they were. They, they saw the script for Lethal Weapon because he pulls a straight Martin Riggs move oh, here. Oh, yeah, 100% Martin. Where the uh, the criminal grabs, takes the, the priest hostage, mm-hmm. and then Nick's like, kill him. I'll, you know what? I'll fucking kill him. I don't yeah. give a shit. I'm crazy. Here's what we'll do. I'll kill him, and then you kill me, and 
uh, maybe I'll get to kill you. And this guy, she's like, you know what? <laughs> this is a little too rich for me. This porridge is a little too thick for this guy. So he just gives up. <laughs> yeah, he just drops his gun. He's so crazy, he gives up. Yeah. And then Balsack looks at the audience and says, clap for me. I just saved your fucking lives. <laughs> he did the Jeb Bush. Clap now. <laughs> and everyone clapped. Please clap. Please clap. <laughs> the most saddest thing ever. And then, so now, Frank, he follows uh, Fredo Bandito into a church. Yeah. He just, and there's a, there's a lot of, like, apparently drunken uh, banditos in this church because he can't even tell who's who. Why were there so many banditos? <laughs> I don't know, but they're all sleeping in the pews. Uh, and then he sees these fresh white Reeboks underneath the confessional booth. And he hears them, Father, I have sinned. Uh, I, 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 I was attracted to, I think, was a man. Yeah. And he's like, you're going to hell, buddy. Pulls the curtain away, pulls the gun out, rests. Frito gives up. Yeah. Another great bust in the books from Nick and Frank. Of course, like, Frito, or uh, Frank, like, walks in and sees Nick, and he's like, you look fucking awful as a woman. And then goes, I don't know. Some scout from Playboy just asked me if I wanted to be in Playboy. Yeah, that's right. He likes my legs. Cut to the next day at the station. We got to have a fucking captain that yells at our boys because, you know, they don't play by the rules. Right. So we get one. Play, uh, captain Ferris, played by Peter Graves. We all remember from Airplane. You know, do you ever seen Gladiator movies and that kind of shit? Ever seen a naked man, kid? <laughs> that guy. And uh, we also see uh, Kaminsky, who's the, like the lieutenant, who's like, these guys are great. Oh, my God. No. He is their biggest fan. He's always covering because the captain, he doesn't get it. He doesn't yeah. get it. It's amazing. These right. He's are. like, I'll get the captain and get it. Do you guys need some coffee? Do you want a donut? I know a couple of you very young ladies. I've got a hookup. His name's Epstein. I'll get you guys some ladies. So we're, we're going back over. Ferris is like, get off the Sacosta guy. Leave him alone. All right. He's a pillar of the community. He donates to my kid's t-ball team. Fuck off. And Nick's like, no, I know this guy is behind everything. Right. He's the kingpin of L.A. And Captain doesn't want to hear it. So it's Kaminsky, again, who's coming in. He's always got, like, seersucker, bright blue suits and everything on. He's very tubby. But there's just something jolly about him that gets right through the captain. And he's just like, look, these guys, they're fucking badasses. Hey, Frank, can you play us a number real quick? And Frank does a little diddly on, you know, a little medley on his trumpet. Well, no, just on the mouthpiece. Just, just on the mouthpiece, yeah. Beep, beep, beep. He beatboxed? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Captain is a big fan of beatboxing. He's an 80-year-old beatbox fan. <laughs> it is the 80s. Yeah, it is. And he beatboxes, and that soothes our captain. Yep. And, uh, but he's like, look, you guys get the fuck off the casa. I'm going to put you on a new detail. Uh, Boudreaux. We're going to take a chance on this guy. He says he has evidence. We, we have to send him to Del Mar for some reason. I thought they had to get him from Del Mar? They had to get him. You're right. There you had go. To, we had to pick him up from Del Mar. He got busted in Del Mar. Pick him up. He's going to break the case. We're going to find out who's really running the drug trade in L.A. That's right. I mean, you got to use the little fish to get the big fish. And as soon as Nick hears this, he's like, my mom lives in Del Mar. I haven't talked to my mom in a whole month. There's probably just messages on my answering machine from my mom. Frank, you can't. We can't do this. We can't. We can't. I can't go to Del Mar. I can't go to Del Mar. And we get a little gag that goes throughout the movie wherever uh, the captain and Frank are around. Frank goes, mmm, 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 mmm. And he goes oh, what? That's a thing? Yes. They do that like three times are in the movie. you kidding me? What the fuck was he this? He just mumbles some shit. Like, mmm, 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 mmm. And like, the captain goes, what? Oh, I'm not saying anything, Captain. It's usually like fucking cracker ass cracker, cracker ass cracker. Oh, so, oh, oh, careful with that c word. People get in, are getting in hey, a lot of trouble. We for can say whatever it. we want on this show. Oh, okay. So we also learn Frank's like, I'm not getting on a plane. You know how terrified I am of planes. And of course, we know what a piece of dog shit Nick is. Like, ooh, really? You don't like planes? Like the little evil grin, and then oh yeah, um, of course ball sacks gonna use edit. He's the guy who's like, I'm just having fun with you, but always pushes it ten steps too right. far. And he's like, he's the Bam Margera. Oh my god, thing. the people who get know that name are gonna yeah. are gonna be very amused by that. Yeah, All fuck, right, fuck so we're gonna follow Nick. You know, we heard about you know Teresa mentioned ball sack. You got a fucking house. Why don't you come pick up your 
bitch well, you ass. You got an apartment. He's have a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, your bitch ass walleye and put it up in your own. I'm still putting it together. All right, so we're going there. We're gonna go see right. his little bitch ass apartment. He's got. A mini split second apartment. He, oh my god, you're right. He did. <laughs> yes. Holy shit! Because the only thing that was missing was the chocolate <laughs> donut stuck to the fridge. Yeah. Chocolate, Jimmy like Hart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because, <laughs> of course, every badass cop's got to have a chopper in his apartment. Yes. So he's got that, and it's a mess. It's a pigsty because he doesn't care anymore. He's got one chair set up, and it's not across from its TV. His TV, it's next to his TV. <laughs> so just so we can listen and not watch it. <laughs> yes. Like, oh my god, he likes to listen because we learn. He sees. There's some messages on his answering machine. Okay, so first he goes into the kitchen, yeah. and he's like, I need sustenance. So he right. grabs another Bud Light. He slaps a Coke label on it. It's like, <laughs> you're at home. You can yeah, drink right. here. And then he grabs Practice. a raw steak. Raw steak and some A1 steak sauce. That was not A1 steak no. sauce. What it was, Horchestershire <laughs> sauce. That's okay. Liam Perry's. So oh, it's classy. He went straight fucking method on this shit. And I will say, I will applaud you for this effort. Because he sits down with that steak next to his TV and hits the answering machine, like you mentioned. Right. And it's just mom, mom, Constantly. mom, mom. She's obsessed with him. She's stalking him. He, yeah. he learned it from his mom. He You're right. That, that's what love is. You stalk people. You're right. You just fucking, like, choke them to death with your love. <laughs> right. You're right. Interesting. And while he's going through the messages, he rips so he pulls out his butterfly knife and shoosh, shoosh, shoosh. And then he starts uh, just gnawing into this. There steak. were also like split second, there were pigeons inside his apartment. They Why were flying they around. It's shitting everywhere. Yeah. There's shit all over the answering machine. Yeah. <laughs> and he just grabs a chunk of steak. He just jams it up. He all he had between him, the knife. And his crotch was a thin piece of styrofoam. And he just went in there and did it. Yeah. Well, a stunt man probably did it. Yeah, you're right. You saw it was a very close up shot. You're right. The balls were too big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got him. I got ball sack. Yeah, he doesn't have a ball sack. And so like you say he rips off raw piece of meat. Ch- he's, he's, got, he's going full steak tartare on this one. Excuse Throws me? Steak tartare. That's raw steak. Oh, uh, raw, okay. raw meat. And he eats it, and then he takes a swig of that fucking steak sauce. I can't imagine. And he had a Coke label on that. Well, why did he need that? <laughs> this man, I don't know what's going on, but this is why we need serious psychiatric help for our law enforcement. Because this man has been a cop this is, for this, like... Yeah, but this is considered a good thing for cops. I, I know. Time. It's like he's hard-boiled. He goes and solves case, But it's like, he's fucked <laughs> up. He's putting Coke labels on everything. He's like dodging his mom's calls. He's sitting next to his TV and consuming the radiation that way. Like, what the fuck? fuck and that's where he gets the message about frank and he's like i can't fly and he's just laughing chugging away at his yeah, it's thinking about the next prank he's gonna do oh. the next day they're on a got a tiny little like eight-seater plane frank he's got a little like radio like, uh, a walk man is playing like breathe in breathe out it's med- breathe it, it, in, namaste you know. it's meditation and and uh we, we said nick's a piece of shit so he's like hey man hope we don't fly we don't die oh yeah he just goes Oh, the plane is coming! Burn it down! And shoots one of the captain, like the captain of the plane. This is for the joke. <laughs> Isn't like, it funny? <laughs> God damn it! Can you fly with one arm? You know, it's like oh. Then on. he stripped out and helicoptered him. Just the fucking worst. It was the plane ride from hell. It was the plane ride from hell for Frank. For definitely. <laughs> All right, so they land down. They're going to go straight to you know the police precinct right. that they're going to pick yeah, up. It's strictly business. They're here to pick up they're, Boudreau. They're, they're in New they're, Orleans they're a to pick up Chance Bordeaux. Yeah. You know, they said, you hard-targeted too many people. <laughs> they that. get there, and the cop's like, his lawyer said he ain't leaving until tomorrow. Why? Who fucking cares? Why? You know, of course, we're setting up a scene, but I'm like, why, What's the, why would he say that? Yeah. Like, I'm not leaving till tomorrow. But why do we need this scene? Oh, and then we just turn to a fucking smiling Frank, and he's got his hands, hands under his chin, and he's just like, oh, that's a real shame. I got a friend in town. I'm going to go have a nice jazz dinner and fuck all over her body. Maybe her friend, too. She can lick my elbow while I fuck her friend real good. Well, well yeah, he's got to fuck her friend if he's fucking over her body. Because... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm gonna make a Vinny sandwich, a human Vinny sandwich is basically what. Well, I'm what doing. am I gonna do? Like, if I can't come party with you, I called your mom. <laughs> she knows you're coming, baby. So he's like, "Fuck, I gotta go see my mom." All right. So he goes to his mom's house. His mom played by she's all. I think all she ever played with moms. It's every. It's Raymond. Everybody yeah. was Raymond mom, except in Grandma Boy. She was Grandma. <laughs> she's versatile, <laughs> very versatile. Which, but she was still a mother like figure. And there's tension, man, because she's like, "Baby, why don't you call?" He's calling her kid, baby. Yeah. Why don't you call me? Yeah. He's, first of all, you're calling me baby, mom. It's inappropriate. It is inappropriate. But and she's just like, "I just worry about you. Why couldn't you be a lawyer like your brother?" <gasps> Fuck him. I like being a fucking cop. Do you know how many times I get to choke out a man? I need that, mom. But I'm just worried about what happened with your dad. And then, the, then the, the tension just goes away. And she comes up and she's like, look at my beautiful boy. Look at my baby buns. Look at these baby buns. Are those 31s? Are you still wearing 31 wasters? God damn. Last time I saw you were in 33s. You're just fit. You're so fucking fit. I'm going to land a niner on you. And that's not sexual. She kisses Ugh, him nine that, times. That would be it. Would be a sixty-nine if it was sexual. And so she, we learn basically that her, his dad died being a cop. Dad died just being a cop. Yeah. He was just at home he, watching he the game. Yeah, and he, he died being yeah, a cop. He was in his uniform though. <laughs> he had a heart attack, but he died being a cop. He was dressed as a cop when he had the heart attack. <laughs> okay. And he's just like he's like there, there, he's like Whoa, he's, there, there's this very solemn moment. The rain clouds come in. Yeah. And so how do you fucking bring that energy back up? Mom's excited. Baby boy's home. Baby bun cakes all over the place. Right, she's like, baby boy, it's Tuesday. You know what that means? Oh, I know what Tuesday means, Mom. I've been dreaming of this day. I was at home eating a raw steak yesterday, and I was just thinking about sloppy joes. Sloppy joes and french fries. Mm. The perfect Oven combo. Oven baked New Year's <laughs> Eve french fries. <laughs> I was just thinking... I can't remember the last time I had a fucking sloppy Joe. God, I He's never like, liked it, him. Is it a man witch? You better believe it, baby. What is the appeal of a sloppy Joe? I don't know. I don't like sloppy anything. Yeah, no. Except blowjobs. You know that. <laughs> but, Wait, you know, why do I know that? <laughs> because we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Oh, right. I can for eat a peach all episode. day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, for the face off. Yeah, you, you like a cat bath blowjob. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> dry like sandpaper. I like a sloppy and what? But it's more exotic that yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> so they go off. He's like, Yay! He goes off and has a sloppy Joe. <laughs> All now, right. Now, next. talking about sloppy Joes. Oh. He had a, <laughs> Frank had a sloppy hoe last night <laughs> because he drives up. It, with, is it Dark Corridors or whatever her name is? <laughs> Dark uh, Journey? Dark Journey. <laughs> this chick, her, her shirt dress was so short, her ass is hanging yes, out. Yes. But and, she's got the candy ra- candy apple red right. convertible, and that's exactly how. I mean, that might. It, wait a minute, is Frank a mechophile? Was well, he just <laughs> as into the car as he is? Because he's always cruising around in a candy uh, candy red apple convertible. He, I, I, yeah, apparently he only dates women that have candy red apple convertibles. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I'm sorry. He doesn't own one because we see earlier his car gets trashed. He has like a Ford Taurus. Yeah. So yeah, he just uses women for their cars. Well, he has no he interest in sex. He no, he's trying to deny his mechophiliacness. Mechophilia. That's why he's always sucking on that fucking uh, oh my God, mouthpiece from the oh, from the trumpet. It reminds him of a fucking exhaust pipe. Yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! See, you, Wait, only, oh. you only get this shit in G and G theater. And yes, we did put that up on IMDb, but <laughs> they've got us on like some kind of blacklist. They don't accept our facts, yeah. and that's how you know they're not real news. Right, so she drops him off. You can just see fucking uh, Nick stewing. He's like, "Damn it, he got laid." Because he's he lives to just make sure that Frank never gets laid. That's his whole job. Do you think has Balsack been castrated? Is Balsack has no Balsack? I, I I mean I think it's an ironic maybe but maybe metaphorically yeah yeah okay I mean, yeah it, now it's all calling into place so. Frank hates airplanes because he wants to fuck him so much. Oh my god, he he was he's number 5. He's the fifth. He's worried that he's going to lose control and start fucking the plane while Nick is in the plane. He's just going to start rubbing his dick in between the seats. He's going to go up to the yoke and just like I don't I don't know just like swing his dick in he's between choke it. Choke the yoke. He's going to choke the yoke. I don't know how you would choke a yoke, <laughs> yeah. but I I mean it rhymes, so it's got to work. <laughs> yeah. That's got to yeah. be the exuberance he's looking for. Oh my god. 
So we see they got Boudreaux finally. It's it's not the Boudreaux we were, were looking for. This isn't the Boudreaux you're looking for. No. See, that's a Star Wars <laughs> reference, yeah. Murray. That should have been in Boba Fett. Yeah. <laughs> they put him on the plane, and they take off. As soon as they take off, a chopper takes off. So we're like, oh, that's up to no good. Yeah. Oh, I mean, come on. I mean, I don't – maybe – I understand that these because they're in a small. They're not in obviously in like in like an airliner. They're in a small plane. Cessna, something like that. So they don't go that fast. But could a chopper keep pace with a fucking plane? Mm -mm. Look, I listen to a lot of Bill Burr, and he's always talking about the differences (laughs) between helicopters and planes. Really? Is that his thing? His thing is uh, helicoptering. And he's like, I wish I could have gotten into planes, but helicopters are just so fucking relaxed. It's so easy. I don't know. I would be scared to be in a helicopter. They're always crashing all the time. Are they? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Fucking I've never Harrison Ford's about. crashed in a fucking helicopter a couple well, of times. Well, Harrison Ford was just slapping Coke labels on fucking, like, straight bottles of vodka. So that's his problem. So somehow, the, the, the laws of physics don't apply because the chopper is keeping a pace with this airplane. And we got Frank. He's got the namaste. Namaste. He's listening to that. He's totally engrossed in his fucking meditation. They've got the fucking perp, Boudreaux, with a bag over his head. they got his pants pulled down. They've got clamps on his nipples. They've got fucking carrot up his ass. we got, like, uh, ball sacks, like, what would, what would it be if I, I took that mask off? Quite painful. <laughs> For you. For you. And so we see <sighs> the chopper just fucking a guy with a machine gun. Just unloads on the on the ship. Yeah, the ship, the plane. The ship. Kills Boudreaux. Yes. Unfortunately, does not kills the captain. For, unfortunately, doesn't kill Balsack. That's right. But Balsack, he's so cocky. No pun intended. Because he has no balls. He Cock- he he oh. does something that uh, Troy Caster could not do. Yes. Takes over the plane. Yeah. And lands it in a, on a farm. Perfect landing. Goes right into some a bale of hay. Boudreaux does not get shot. I said no. he didn't get shot, but he does not get shot. He does. Because he escapes. Right. So they crash land. They're all ajarred. He goes over to Frank, and he's like, did you let Boudreaux get away? You motherfucker. I told you to watch Boudreaux while I land this fucking plane like Soli Solenberg. And now it's just like, well, we're just in this little farmland here, so he's probably in that barn over there. So he's got to go check out the barn. Runs over that. Meanwhile, Frank shoots the chopper out of the sky. He's got like a fucking... Are you kidding me? Yes. He shoots it, and they see smoke, and they just take off. Shit, I don't remember that. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Balsack goes into the the uh, barn, looking around. Uh, Boudreaux gets the drop on Balsack. Yeah, and it's looking grim. Uh, well, looking out for us. We're like, yes, thank, please. Yeah, you're right. Kill I should Stab yeah. him with a pitchfork. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Fucking ball sack. And so it just so happens that a farmer, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how he heard a plane crash on his fucking <laughs> property. He somehow, yeah. this is just silly logic right, right here. So he comes in and he's hearing a ruckus. He hears a plane crash. Comes into the barn, sees that there's a man on top of it. He's getting a gun and he's pointing it down at a fucking awful human being. And he decides, you know what? This, I, I'm pretty sure I saw this guy in a MAGA march. So I'm going to take out the other guy. So he shoots Boudreaux in the chest. Nick, classic Nick. What the fuck, man? This guy just saved his life, and he has an attitude. Mm-hmm. He's like, you just ruined my fucking career, fuck face. Yeah. I, I, had I, the, I had this situation handled. I thought I was saving your life. Well, you didn't save my life, fucker. Get out of here. Walk. And he just makes the guy leave his own barn. Yeah, his own barn. Goes down to Boudreaux. We get a thing. Because Boudreaux goes was up to Boudreaux. Boudreaux's... A, with the hitman, he's like, yeah, they're in the hayloft. Yeah, and he's like, fuck, I never knew it hurt this bad. I've shot many people in the chest. I kind of like this moment <laughs> yeah, where Rudro is just like, I've shot so many people with the shakan that my papa gave me <laughs> on the farm. Wilford Brimley, you probably heard of him. And he's like, fuck, I, I, I'm, I have some regrets. Yeah, I shouldn't have shot guys with a shotgun. I should have paid for that gumbo. And then he does the most ridiculous. Over the top, die, uh, uh, and then this dies on Nick. And Nick's like, "Fuck!" All right, and now, boom, we're back at our home headquarters, where of course they're going to be chewed out because Boudreaux got fucking murdered on their watch. Right. So, death duty for these guys. You, you're too obsessed with Decosta because, because of course, Nick's like Decosta was behind all of this. There's no evidence at all. No, he's going on a hunch. Oh yeah, he, he's like. 
Uh, my cops eight cents because I have eight senses. Actually, you only have like three. I have eight. I have the nine powers of the ninja right. too, uh, and I also have a VHS copy of. I can't think of what was a hot movie like that. I'm sorry, I just fucking just... <laughs> lethal weapon, lethal weapon. And so yeah, and and we're we're thinking, wow, why does this captain so want to protect the costume? There must be something up with this captain. There's gotta be. But you know what, Murray? I can't think straight on an empty stomach, so... Right, neither can Nick and Frank. Yeah, so it's like, hey, we got to go figure out something. So apparently they went to some kind of fusion diner where you can get greasy fucking food and health food at the same time? Or I mean, it's California. Okay. It's L.A. There's a population of 5,000 people, and that's a melting pot right there. Oh, so, oh. of course, I mean, we talk about Vinny's all the time and the Italian-Mexican fusion that's happening there and right. the pastrami rain. <laughs> My God, you know, you know that pneumatic like tube thing where they throw yeah. the money around yeah. i love that at vinnie's when you go there on a sunday night they have that 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 whole cage tube wind tunnel uh, thing but with pastrami slices yes. you can you can get your own, it's like when you pick out your own lobster you can pick out your own pastrami but they make it a little more fun yeah yeah so you get yeah. it in there yeah and it, it, yeah. you just try to pack yeah. man chomp yeah. the pastrami out of the air i tell you grip i've been trying to get Vinny to give us a franchise, and he's like, no. He won't. He's very no. strict. This is not Chick-fil-A. Right. We got a Chick-fil-A now. Everyone's got Chick-fil-A's. Yeah. Chick-fil-A's are the new, uh, I don't know, the whore baths, you know? It's just like, they're everywhere. All right? <laughs> Our whore baths everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Murray, I was reaching there. You yeah, saw yeah, the yeah. struggle. You were struggling. You were struggling. Yeah. Yeah. I was pulling a ball sack out. <laughs> you ball sacked me. It's okay. Yeah. I needed it. <laughs> So they're going over because, like, Nick's like, it's the cost. I'm telling you. Frank's like, why don't you chill out, man? All right. Let's talk on course here, though, because Nick, of course, has uh, a nice piece of fried. Well, it was just fried fried. It was just fried dough <laughs> fried <laughs> twice. It was just, yeah, it was just and, fried breading. Yeah. And then <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then, of course, he's got like a nice French fry next to that. And then next to that, he's got some chicken tendies. He, had, he's a and child. he also had deep fried sloppy joe. And he had a deep fried, a full <laughs> deep fried sloppy joe, and he cut it open and show, displayed it for, um, for Frank here and said, "Do you is that not just the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen?" And now we're looking at Frank's on course. He busts out three little containers. Wait, no, Frank had before uh, uh, Ballsack came back. Frank had another woman with him. Shoot her off. He's like, "Look, baby, beat it." Yeah. So he always has a lady with him, and you can just see the anger, the steam coming out of fucking uh, ball sack's ears because he's just like, got laid again, damn it. Yeah. So, yeah, he's got the little compartment. I think Frank just brings his own. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Because okay. he, he cares about his temple, yeah, his temple. body, you know? Oh. And so he's got, like, the yeast extract in there, and then he's got, like, some nice uh, uh, Fibonacci seeds uh, <laughs> to help his mathematical brain out. Uh, you know he's very concerned. Yogurt, sprouts. not not Danimal yogurt. He doesn't do the Danimal uh, as we look over to fucking ball sack, just fucking shooting a Danimal. That back then there was Danimals, you know, that sugary shit yogurt just gives him the sugar runs. He's got that real shit, that Icelandic yogurt. Wow, not even Greek yogurt. Icelandic not even Greek. Yogurt? He goes a step higher. Wow, Icelandic. <clears throat> and <clears throat> he's looking. He's looking good. He is looking. Well, he's fit. He's got the ladies. He's got it all. He is Ric Flair in this movie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and uh, ball sack is Ronnie Garvin. And so they're going over it, and he's like, we have no leads. Who are these hitmen? we got to find out who they're working for. I'm sorry. This movie is just so disjointed. Yeah. Like, we're just, just like throwing Much like darts. this episode, yeah. Yeah, and we're just running all over the place. We're talking about ball sacks. We're talking about... Icelandic yogurt. We have no idea what we're doing here. So, uh, Balsack just throws throws one out there. Hey, let's go check out. Uh, what was the guy's Casey. name? Casey. Casey. Let's just go fuck with Casey. He's always got something interesting to say. Let's just go fuck with him. So now in the next scene, we're at Casey's place. He's got like stacks of stolen VCRs. Yeah, we're seeing inside of his uh, like little loft apartment, and it's beautiful. It's a wonderful place, but stacks of VCRs. Uh, I, I I believe I saw a nice collection, the nice Golden Globus Theater uh, box set there. Right. I don't even know how I got it. I don't know either. Uh, played by the dude who played Bubba and Forrest Gump, and he's got he's got a very eighties outfit, very colorful. Yeah, and he's got a Jerry curl. It was like San Diego Chargers, uh, yellow and blue. I I think. Okay. Yeah. 
But he's like kind of playing standoffish because here's the door knock and he's just like yeah. looking at all of his merch. If we point out Frank is black. We're, yeah, yeah. This is a good time to point that out. <laughs> yeah. Billy D. Williams is, in fact, black. A black man. And he sounds like a black man. Uh huh. But because he's such a card, he's, you know, he's, he's such a rep scallion, such a rascal, fucking ball sack has to call out in the Again. Most- Definitely a Robert Carradine. Yeah, my character is going to do yeah, this. He would do this. It, he does the, the black scent. The horrible white guy trying to say, "Yo, hey, blood, what's happening?" It's like it was the worst. And even fucking Casey's like, oh, "Holy shit, I can't believe this motherfucker's doing." This. It was straight out of Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, straight out of Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, when they were trying to oh root, yeah, when they scene. were trying to ruse the black woman, yeah. the blind woman. Excuse yeah. me, blind black On woman. Esther, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was that bad. It was so bad. And the face that Bubblegum Shrimp had to put on himself, he was just like... <laughs> he was grinding his teeth. Yeah, he was all nervous at first, and then he hears that accent, and he's like, I know my own people. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Who directed yeah. this scene? I wonder how cringeworthy it was. No, it know. wasn't Carl Weathers. We know that for no, sure. It was not. There was no M&M's. No M&M's. And then they just barge right in. Like I think he opens the door, but they barge That's right in. That's Ball Sack's move. Yeah. Ball Sack immediately goes to the little mirror with cocaine, blows the coke off the mirror. That's also his move. He does yeah. that multiple times in the he movie. Just does, he just goes through the CDs. He grifted it. He grifted it. Yeah, it's true. And, he's, and, and he took a couple. That's how fucking retarded okay, he is. Okay, I don't do... I don't do that. No, you don't do that. But I flip through it. No, you, you've you never taken one. You just yeah. you play them without Sometimes permission. Sometimes I look at the lyric sheets, yeah. too, because, you yeah. know, when you get those Garth Brooks, it's really hard to figure out what he's saying. He doesn't sing very clearly sometimes. And they immediately, uh, well, not they, Frank just chilling, sucking on his fucking um, mouthpiece, trumpet mouthpiece. Yep. But they strong arm Casey. Look, fucker. Look, fuck face. You're going to find out what's going on with DaCosta. Get me some leads. And... Or I'm going to put you in jail because look, all these VCRs you got here. Oh, this is really interesting. And he's got a Rolex on. He pops it off. Yeah. Oh, are you Dr. Feelgood? Is that you? No, it's Dr. Kettlebaum. Dr. Ira K. Because he's, like, he's like, yeah, my oh. lady got me that Rolex. And he's just like, oh, really? It says in the engraving, to my dearest Ira Kettlebaum. Oh, does your lady call? You know how women are. They just scream things in yeah. passion. My girl loves Jews. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, and he's just like, yeah, well, look he, 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 here, Jew. We're going to put take you to the concentration. We're going to take you to Ilsa's concentration camp if you don't get us some leaves. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, general mutilation for everybody. You'd be castrated just like me. <laughs> All right, but they're, they get what they need out of him. What yeah. did they get? They get the next lead, but what was well, No, he's. I think they just said, look, go, put word out on the street. Oh, like, you're Find right, out you're some right. shit for him. We're going to contact you, you know, yeah. in a day or two. Right. You you get your ear to the ground. And as they walk out, Casey goes, you know what, ball sack? You know what they're calling you on the street? Berserk. I think that's okay by me. God, ball sack, you suck so much. That sounded like me struggling to come up with another line. That was fucking ball sack right. going straight method in character as ball sack. And so ball sack is like, I haven't harassed Teresa in a while. I'm going to go over and do that. So he goes back over to Teresa's. Yeah, no, th- this, is, this is where they're driving back home. It, it's the street life, and you got that wonderful sh- song from Shrieky, Sharky's Machine. <laughs> the street life. Uh, Only life I know. He's, he's just like, oh, shit, I'm supposed to meet Teresa at 8 o'clock tonight. Oh, Drop yeah. me off here. Where <laughs> are we, first of all? Yeah. And then this, yeah, nothing, he, this nothing. Is what, this, is, this is why I fucking hate Paul Sack. Nothing about this. She thing finally said. agrees to go out to dinner with him. Uh, I'm sorry. She doesn't. Oh, you're right. She does. He it. makes it up. He she makes, does it. He makes it up for Frank and says they're supposed. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So Frank is just obliges and drops him <laughs> off. He can't wait to get rid of this fucking yeah, drink. Right. Exactly. He's like, okay, enough. That, you know, this guy goes a long way. You get a you get a whiff of him, and you're just like, fuck. Okay, ten <laughs> minutes is more than enough. I'm leaving him. So. Draws him off in the middle of fucking nowhere. He's just like beep bopping around. You got all the fu- you got the churches that are open all all night <laughs> right. next to the fucking. Sex you see club. Paul Kersey just aimlessly walking with a blazer and a stocking cap on. That's right. 
And then, of course, Ballsack hones in on a fucking Zarg th- alley. Right. And he's like... Drenched with water. Oh, he was just like, there's got to be nothing but bad fucking hombres over here. Because he, yeah. he's really good into profiling. Yeah. He's really into the stop and frisk. And, of course, walks five feet right next to the dumpster. Not Ric Flair getting his dick sucked, <laughs> but a couple of kids who were up to no good. Not I mean, kids. they were just shooting they're, basketballs they're, they're, outside of the hood. <laughs> No, they're grown men. They're two oh, okay. grown men. Because we learned that one of them went to school with fucking Nick. But, but before <laughs> that, Nick beats the shit out of the guy. He fucking punches him in the face, grabs him by the collar, makes him pay a dollar, slams his face into a brick wall. The guy's shitting Rubs teeth everywhere. Rubs his face along the brick wall. Then puts him down by his boots, because he's wearing cowboy boots, <laughs> and he fucking just, the rattlesnake, they got sharp scales on him. He's just fucking cheese grating his face. <laughs> and then he stops and says, Carlo... Is that you? You remember me from uh, high school? Blah, blah, blah. His teeth are just falling out of his mouth. Blah, 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 blah. Remember we stole that Trans Am in high school? Yeah, somehow it's different when I commit crimes than when you do. That's so are funny. you committing a crime? I don't know. Well, why don't you get out of here? Your friend over here looks a little darker toned in skin, so I'm going <laughs> to fuck with him now. Right. And now we have uh, Mitchell. Malcolm. Malcolm. And he's like, Malcolm Man. in the middle. Malcolm, 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 what are we doing? Your face isn't too familiar around here. Are you over here getting some taquitos? She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? What's this bullshit cop race of ball sack bullshit you're pulling on me here? He's like, you keep talking to me like that. And it's within my rights as a cop to punch you in the face, pull down your pants, castrate you. And Malcolm goes, hey, man, I know my rights. Well, you got the right to remain silent. And then he just punches the guy in the mouth, leaves him. He's like, get out of town. Yeah, I'll keep my eyes on you. So you fucking, you know, you shape so up. So he stumbles into Teresa's place. So again, I had a date with Teresa at 8 p.m. <laughs> he stops in the middle of nowhere, beats up some fucking homeless people, and then wanders across town to Teresa's. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he took a bus. We don't know. We don't know. Hitchhiked. Yeah, know. that's a good point. Stumbles into Teresa covered in blood. Not his blood, Carlo's blood. <laughs> his yeah. hand is covered in blood. Yeah. And th- oh my God, this is where it gets absolutely insane. Because Teresa, again, with the fucking little door latch on, she's like, Is that blood on you? Is that, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I just beat up my old high school buddy. <laughs> and he's like <laughs> flaunting it. He's rubbing the blood on her wall. What the fuck? Well, the door. He hasn't been let in yet. But, yeah, he's just wiping it all over the place. He's like, yeah, it's no big deal. You know, I just beat up a couple of perps. Drug drug types, you know. Urchins, street urchins. And barges in. Oh, are you you going out? You fuck fuck some guy? You fucking whore? She's like, well, as a matter of fact, I was going out. See my big boxy 80s clothes I'm wearing? Yeah. Excuse me, I was going to go out for a, a, a 11 o'clock movie and uh, maybe grind session. Maybe, maybe I might do a, I might put the hole in the popcorn so when he reaches down there, gets his hand up in my cooch. Wow. Does that, that's the thing? Does anyone ever Peaches do that? Peaches and popcorn? No. Does that ever go the other way around? No. Well, women should look into that. Yeah, we're right Look at that. I mean, this is we're in, we're in like a liberated time. This is 2022. Yeah. There's so many two. 2022, late ladies. Only one woman listening. <laughs> Do that. Do Switch that. it around. Encourage your man. Yeah. To to, to yeah. <laughs> All right. This is exciting. This is a very exciting episode. We're breaking. So here. yeah, we're breaking something. So we cut back to DeCosta's meeting with Pogue again. He's like he's like Pogue's like. Poke can't wait to kill Nick because he's a normal human being. He's like, this guy's a piece of shit. I'll do it for free. Yeah. No. Hold off. I need him around for this distraction. There's a huge deal coming through. Again, it's kind of like an alibi. It's like it helps him prove that the police are fucking corrupt when Nick's right. around. Well, yeah. Well, that's the whole thing is I can because we, we learned or Nick thinks he's holding L.A. together. Yeah. So he, And so does DaCosta. So he's like, if Nick is watching me. The mice will play. Right. Okay. Yeah. This this is all making sense. So, uh, f- uh, for some reason, Nick, this 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 whole scene did not pan out. I don't know why they did this scene. No, it really didn't. It just proved that at one point, 
Teresa. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'll explain this a little better. So Pogue has decided he's going to get uh, a little bit of a leverage over Nick. Right. So him and just a random punker. <laughs> this punker. How do you feel about him? He uh, he should have been New Year's Evil. He uh, wow, good call. Because he had the very short shirt and then the jeans and then handcuffs hanging off him, just like very yeah. yeah. Maybe it was just some. Maybe it was a street prostitute that Pogue picked up while he was there and was like, "I'll maybe. fuck this guy in Nick's Nick's uh, apartment." Yeah, so you they, don't notice all the jizz everywhere. No, they he no. would have. So they break in there. They steal his Coke labels because, like, this is just genius. I'm, I'm going to pop this on everything. Oh, they're pulling a Margera, a Van Margera on them. <laughs> These little merry little pranksters. <laughs> what, what, why is Van Margera on your head today? Because I fucking hate that guy, and I'm thinking about Nick. <laughs> oh, okay. I like how you know, it correlates. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're going to go through his shit. You know, they go through his dresser. I was imagining... Huh? Bam Margera is my age, <laughs> late forties people, and he lives the way he lives still, like when he was seventeen. Yeah, it's kind of sad. It is depressing, but not as depressing as Nick, because he's going through Nick's apartment, he's going through the CDs. Well, one, yeah. the one he stole, and it's all scratched, and it's scratched. Come on, and then he notices all these pictures of Teresa in his drawer with a giant golden retriever, yeah. which. Where did the golden retriever go? They've been separated for two years. No, yeah. I think Nick probably like, like set it loose. I think some kind did. of ploy. You know, oh no, he it was a power it. move. He definitely yeah. was like, oh yeah, that dog you loved more than me. I took it out to the fucking country and I old yellered it. So th- don't worry, guys, because this scene doesn't pan out at all. We're assuming oh they're gonna kidnap Teresa. That's what I was thinking. That's no, what, they don't do anything. No, that that's shit. what I thought too. So now we got a scene where I think they're driving. Well, no, they're just at the zoo. They're at the zoo. You're right. They're just hanging out there. Oh, there's another thing we haven't even talked about. Because it just gets introduced. If Nick is any more insufferable, he's also a guy who loves to play acoustic guitar. Yeah. So he always has an acoustic. He's got his. He was pre. He's pre grunge. He had his flannel shirt on. He had the the acoustic. He was playing Lake of Fire or whatever that song is called. Go to the Lake of Fire and die. Kurt Cobain ripped it off him. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's they're at the zoo. You're right. <laughs> and so they're just chilling. Frank's got, he's like deep throat in that fucking trombone mouthpiece of his. He loves Chicago, the band, not the city. But he probably <laughs> likes city, too. City's not so bad. Yeah, it's a good city. Casey shows up in the shortest short. His dick is hanging out of his fucking shirt. He's riding a 10 <laughs> speed. <laughs> He's like he's wearing Magic Johnson's '80s uniform, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Tube socks are longer than his fucking shorts. <laughs> and, and then he's, that was a that was an interesting look yeah. where your your shorts are super short, but your tube <laughs> socks are like thigh highs. Yeah. And uh, so <laughs> he stops to like check like his like tire pressure or something yeah. next to the guy. Discreetly talk to them because he could get killed for what he's gonna give these guys. And he's like, hey, you didn't hear from me, but and what? I can't hear you. What? Ball what do you got to tell me? Fucking ball sack. Ball sack. I hated him. There was even a moment before. Uh, what was his name? Bubba? Casey. Casey. Casey shows up where uh, fucking ball sack is complaining about his love life. He's like, Teresa, just I show up. I do everything romantic. I bleed all over her fucking house. I wipe my blood all over her place. Like, not even but my But I did blood. it in a heart shape. I did it on her fridge in a heart uh, shape, yeah. and she wasn't into it. I found she was She's still, a bitch. What the fuck's wrong with her? The sexy underwear was still out drying in her living room. Yeah. So, you know, I put it on and, like, you know, tried to do a dance for her, and she wasn't into that. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. And fucking... I love this moment for Frank because he never has many, but he hits him with the look man. Oh yeah, and I love a good look man, and it's because you always shoot out your shoot off your mouth before your brain's loaded. That's oh. beautiful. Yeah, because Frank is always chill, but he had that. He, had, you know, some people that it is they push you to that breaking point, and you've got to let them have it. Right. So Frank is always zen, but he's like he let he hauls off on. On a ball sack. So ball sack has to pout and project it onto poor Casey. Yep. Casey has a hit on him now, thanks to fucking ball sack. Right. He gives him, he gives, he's like, look, you didn't hear from me, but uh, Bobby Sweet, he knows all about this drug deal that's going down. All right. And you know where we're going to go now, Murray? 
<laughs> the mud pits. This place really exists, Griff. It's called Gazari. No way. Yeah. Uh, if you ever see the movie uh, Decline of the Western Civilization Part Two, The Metal Years. <laughs> yeah, I've. Yeah. The guy and the guy Gazari, he's a real guy. He's in this movie. He's the guy that's like, how's it hanging? That old guy that had like the Panama hat behind the bar. Oh shit! Okay. That's Gazari. The 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 the. the uh, owner, proprietor, the proprietor. But the word on the street was he was more into the sexy little glam rock boys than he was into the ladies. But because, but it was like so. Basically, this was like. Does a, that explain the major D? <laughs> yeah, this is a, this was like a Sunset Strip club, not strip club. Sunset on the Sunset Strip club that uh, like cock, uh, hair metal bands would play. Well, what was interesting is that it was a mud wrestling. But when, but when they're not having a bands play, they have mud wrestling. But they wait, and they really they, did have mud wrestling. But wait, they place. had both happening. At well, the, it, it wasn't a it wasn't a hair metal band. It was just a, okay. Yeah. Well, you need some like music for a mud. A I, mud I know. Wrestling. Like, what is the song you play to mud wrestling? I don't know, but the dude Bobby Sweet was killing it on the drums. He was playing like an. He was going nuts. But I, I think it. he was. Uh, I never saw the movie, but I think that's Napoleon Dynamite's uncle or something. Oh my god! I thought he looked familiar. You might be right about that. Yeah. So I loved it, Griff. Mud wrestling, bring it back. I don't, you know, I don't give a fuck about stripping. Mud wrestling needs to make a comeback. I just thought it was funny that there were like in a minute here we go up to the backstage where uh, people are putting on makeup to uh, mud wrestle. Yeah. Well, they're they're glamorous women, Griff. It's All right. The eighties. Anyways, we walk in. We get a stereotypical. Well, not well, he doesn't look stereotypically gay, but he's he's doing the lispy voice because. There's a lot of great offensive uh, um, voice choices in this movie. We had uh, we had a ball sack with his black voice, and now we have this guy with his lispy gay voice. So he's like a biker looking dude, big. Like he's like he probably was the real bodyguard for this. I was gonna bizarre. say, based on what you're telling me, I think this guy uh, that might have been him. And he walks in, and uh, they ask for Bobby Sweet. He's not working here tonight. Okay, when you do it, it's. <laughs> And uh, I, I didn't do it lispy enough, but uh, he's because you know, like they're stalling. <laughs> I'm fucked up on this this scene. I'm losing it on this scene. It's okay. It's okay. okay. So they show up to the mud bar. Okay. Pogue is actually following them. He's keeping a trail on the fucking cops because they know Nick's such a fucking crazy badass. They're like, if we keep tabs on him, we'll be three steps ahead of the police force. So we got the you know. We got the the lispy Mater D or whatever they want to call bouncer. bouncer and Mater D. <laughs> yeah. It is Mater D, right? That's yeah, it wrong. is ma- no the position that you pronounce the word correct. But oh, I not, did. The position is not correct. What is a Mater D then? He's the guy who runs a restaurant. Oh, he just runs it. Well, he like takes he runs like the waiters and waitresses and seats people and all that. Yeah, he's shit. a greeter. Yeah. Sla- okay, he does a Vinny lot. Vinny is a Mater D, right? Mm. Vader Mini. Uh, but yeah, so after they get to the bar. And of course, Balsack has no cool. Right. Billy or Frank, uh, Billy D. Williams. Frank is like checking out the action. He's like, "My God, the girls' techniques! It's so good. This is not much. It's much show wrestling, but it's not much show wrestling. That <laughs> no, that nah. fucking drop toe hold, that uh, uh, yeah. headlock takeover, like yeah. everything they're doing yeah. here is fantastic. Like AEW right. should be watching this, right? But of course, Balsack's going over. He's confronting the the apparent owner of this yeah. establishment, <laughs> and he's immediately, like, hey. I need you to give me the name of Bobby Sweat right the fuck now, or I'm going to drop my fucking shit all over this place. I'm Gigi Allen. Do you know who Gigi Allen is? It's Bobby He's- Sweet for a song. <laughs> Bobby Sweat. <laughs> oh, it's going to be Bobby Sweat in a minute here. His porno name is Bobby Sweat. I'm going to get sweaty all over your establishment. All over your ball sack. All over your ball sack. And Bobby Sweat, Sweet, Sweet. who's playing the drums, apparently overhears all of this. Yeah. He is going crazy on those drums. He's Keith Moon in the drums, dude. <laughs> and then he notices, he comes out of it, he sees ball sack. He's, he probably had some runs of ball sack before. So you just run when you see ball sack. Yeah. So he runs. Ball sack's like, all right, I can shoot him now. He ran from me. So he runs. He falls into the mud pit, starts wrestling, pulls the stripes, starts wrestling, rips the tops off like John Candy. Perfect. And then chases after Bobby. Steve up, James did it, too. Up at the... Oh, no, Fred Williamson did it, too. 
And uh, no, is Fred Williams doing it? I'm pretty I sure. know the guy did it in a Hollywood Cop. He was a, he was just a black oh, guy. Remember, I'm it was oil of, wrestling. Though. I'm thinking of him. That's yeah, what it was. It was oil wrestling. I'm getting confused. One. There's not enough women wrestling in <laughs> liquids anymore. We need to bring that back. <laughs> We're bringing everything else. Back. If, we can, if we can bring fucking roller derby back, can, we bring, bring, it back. can we bring mud wrestling back? Please, bring it back. people. <laughs> so, oh my God, this episode is a mess. <laughs> Oh, first and, of the year, everybody. And it's going to be oh so long. Oh, so oh, long. First of the year. So, Frank, not Frank, Nick chases Bobby through the dressing room. Like you said, they're going to mud wrestle, but they're, they're, they're classy ladies, so they're doing their makeup That's and their right. hair. That's right. Tom Waits and Elvira are in there. All right. <laughs> Follow. <laughs> he goes into the bathroom. He sees there's a, there's a door there, but somehow he knows that Bobby's hiding in the bathroom well, it was stall. A, yeah, there was only, there was oh you know what there's the laundry door and then there's the bathroom stall. He knew he's in the stall somehow. And he's like, come out! And he's like, he doesn't hear anything. So he they got this is one of the things where they, the toilets where they have the tank like it's, it's the top, like it's like yeah. get the cannoli hide the gun get the cannoli from Godfather because it's got that tank up there shoots the tank. Shit water. Somebody did a fucking... Uh, a Vinny's? <laughs> no, what do, they, what do they call it? When upper shit, Decker? The upper Decker. That is like an upper, <laughs> upper Decker. Yeah, you got to be committed to an Upper Decker <laughs> on this one. That level of commitment. Like, one of those strippers out there was quitting that day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he comes out covered in shit water. Look, he just came out of defecation tank. <laughs> Jesus and it's like, you're coming with us, Bobby. Now you're Bobby Swat. I don't know if anyone's going to enjoy this, but we are having the time of our fucking lives. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, they, they get Bobby su- Sweet. I was going to call him Sweat again. He's looking pretty sweaty here, actually. Yeah. Covered in defecation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyways, they get him. They take him off. Take, and, to a little place they use apparently to uh, get information out of because because they're doing they're not supposed to, remember the, the the captain said get off the Dacosta case so they're doing this all on the sly right that's why they don't bring him into the police station right instead they, they this is how this fucking cruel and sick ball sack is but who knows what Bobby Sweat knows <laughs> so they take him to a higher high rise. <laughs> That'd be like, sweet. It, oh, yeah, I know. I did that on purpose. Oh, okay. They, they, they're going to make him sweat. <laughs> so it's like a half, it's a half finished high rise. So it's all open and shit. Yeah. They got these fucking. Well, they're planning. They think maybe their population is going to go from 5,000 to 7,000. So, you know, you got to build a new high rise. Exactly. Elon Musk is coming to town. I hear that's the problem with California now. They can't build enough housing for people. That's why there's so much homelessness going uh, on. No, the problem is everybody's moving away from California. Well, yeah, they all follow Joe Rogan. That's right. Yeah. And Elon Musk. Sorry, Texas. You got to take them. Yep. So they got uh, some, like, uh, boots. Yeah, they had cufflinks. Oh, yeah, they were like boot, full on boots and everything. They're from I can't. I don't. I, was, I don't remember what they're called, but it's it's a thing for like you hang upside down to your back. Yeah, thing. I don't know what it's called, but those are the kind of boots they have. So they, they apparently there's like a beam hanging off into space that they connect them to. So poor Bobby Sweet is sweating now. Yep. He's hanging upside down. And they're just make cracking jokes. Now even Frank's kind of being a dick. He's into it. Yeah, Frank. Uh, this is this is his perversion. Uh, maybe maybe Bobby Sweet knows something about his mechophilia, so he's trying to get him to hush up or something. You know? Don't think of it as throwing up, Bobby. You're throwing down. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. I like that one. That was a Frank line, right? Yep. And so they're really hammering it to him, and they're just like. You know what? I think those ankle grips are a little too tight on you. They're going to go. They got the Allen wrenches out. They're like, we're going to adjust your ball bearings here. And that's, of course, when he starts shouting out the name Pogue. Right. All right. Pogue. Terry Pogue. And I bet you would know his uh, home address, too. So he yells out the home address. Well, meanwhile, Pogue is hearing this because he's parked right down below. Though. He's been tailing them for the last right. three and a half days. But Nick is so focused on DaCosta and Teresa stalking Teresa and putting Coke labels on everything that he doesn't pay attention to these So things. apparently Bo- Pogue just lives like a block away because they leave to go to Pogue's, bust in the house, nothing there. It's an empty building. It's, literally, it's just completely empty. While that's going on, Pogue goes up to Bobby. Our boys come back. So like I said, this has to be a block away because it, how can this shit happen? Everything happens in five minutes here. Yeah. So Bobby goes up. Bobby? No, Bob. Pogue. Pogue. Pogue goes up there. 
and he's talking with Bobby. Bobby's all relieved, like, oh, my God, let me down. Please let me down. And he's like, oh, I'm going to let you down at about 100 miles an hour. Ah! I don't think we'd even, we didn't even get a nice shot of a dummy. No, we didn't. They don't do we that didn't. anymore. They need to do that You just more. heard, oh, my God. We need more mud wrestling. We need more dummies. There we go. So he splats. And then he's walking. You know, they were like 15 stories up or whatever. Mm. So he's getting just down the stairs. Apparently, there's two sets of staircases. And that's when uh, Nick and Frank show back up. And they're like, oh, shit, there's a guy. Let's shoot at him because why not? Well, no, they see uh, Bobby's dead body. Yeah, but... that's right. They saw that first, and then they put two and two together. Okay. Yeah, and then they see Pogue running away. So then they're like, well, we got to chase. We see someone running. They must be committing a crime. That is right. Chase after Pogue. Go through a lot of dripping wet alleys. Uh, Pogue just... Just firing back at him. You're right. This was a very much, we talk about this all the time, everybody, the fucking Baywatch Nights episode where you're running through Zargatha streets, suddenly you're on the beach, and then suddenly you're in a jungle. They go from this empty uh, high rise, uh, in construction high rise, to a jungle, to an alley, and then they're on the streets of New York. (laughs) Yeah. And so Poe goes running out. He doesn't look both ways. There happens to be a New York ninja roller skating by... (laughs) With the purse, and it fucking catches Pogue off guard, and he fucking gets hit by a taxi cab. Yeah, and goes right through the windshield. But he's alive. He's hurt, but he's alive. All right, so we're going to cut to our captain, and of course, they're going to get chewed the fuck out. They weren't supposed to be anywhere close to this case. Right. He told them. And he told them. Here they are, caught with their balls in the cookie jar, Murray. And he's like, stay the fuck away from that hospital. We got our best men guarding it. Stay the fuck away. You have... This... <laughs> They're not suspended. They're put on vacation. Yes. Which is, I guess, a suspension with pay, I guess. Right. That well, is. he doesn't want to get the union upset. Okay. All right? All right. So DaCosta, of course, we got to go over to him, and he's going to get a call about Pogue being in the hospital. Right. So now he's got a loose thread out there. Right. So he's like, I got to get this fucking loose thread. I got to right. cut it. You got to cut that thread well, at the thread. Pogue, Pogue knows too much. So he sends his third best hit, man. He's going down the line. This should be Al Leong. This should be like, you know, uh, uh, oh. Danny Trejo. This it's... is Elder Leong. <laughs> <laughs> Old Leong. Oh, he was. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Elder Leong. That's really good, Murray. But before that happens, we're back at the jazz club. Frank <laughs> is taking <laughs> Frank's like, I'm getting paid, baby. Let's have a good time. I'm going to hang out at the jazz club for the next two weeks. Hell yeah. He's going to do some jazz cigarettes. He's going to play some jazz music. He's got all the jazz ladies DJ just hanging jazz, off his trombone. He's going to watch the Utah jazz. He's oh, my God. Like, yeah. That's a little. That's an excessive <laughs> amount of jazz. Carl Malone. <laughs> Mailman. Carl Malone. Really? John yeah. Stockton. Ooh, yeah. babe. And that he's and speaking back. of babes. He's got a babe watching him. <laughs> yeah, new this, one. Was, this was uh, Dark Corridors. Dark Journey. <laughs> Dark Corridors. <laughs> I don't know why. That's the name. And, of course, he's doing what he enjoys when he's not working. And what and uh, Nick does what he enjoys when he's not working, which is cock blocking. Fucking Christ. Okay, so he's back at his 10-man booth, Frank, with this beautiful lady, Frank right. Booth. Fun how I did right. that. Yeah. He's, he's sitting at your stool. So he's having a great time, and they're talking the philosophy right. of jazz. She loves jazz. cops, so it's cool. Yeah, she did like cops, too. That's fun. And and, uh, and and then fucking ball sex over in the corner, just seeing it, just hammering on his dick like, I can't get Teresa, I can't get Teresa. And then he sees Frank, and he's like, I'm going to fuck with a Frank. And that's what gets him off. He's, he's bamming it. He's bamming it. He's marching all over the fucking phone booth. He's jizzing in the coin <laughs> slots, and someone's going to reach in there for a quarter. and Punch his dad in the face. Oh, uh, And so he's like, I got a good idea. I got a ruse here. Calls up the bartender. Hey. That lady over at Frank's table, yeah, get her over to the phone. Don't tell her who it is. Don't tell. Don't. So that I guess they wouldn't know because he probably does so, this every other day. This, I just realized this whole movie is about uh, offensive voices. You're right. Yeah, it because is. he's got to try out his gay voice. Yeah, you're right. It's like, look, honey, I don't know what he's doing with you. I mean, he loves to make me jealous, and she's like, what? What's going on? If only this woman turned to her left to see <laughs> fucking ball sacks jerking it into the coin five slot. Feet away from her. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That would have been an interesting sight. But anyways. And so he's like, no, he's not into your type, lady. Did he tell you what team he plays for? Because it's he not the jazz. He don't like the thing that you swang. He knows how to use his jazz hands on me, though. 
And then, so she's like, huh, harump. This guy wasted my nights. She goes up to to uh, Frank, drops the F-bomb on him, slaps him in his face. Throws the champagne right into the his champagne? eyeballs. Yeah, champagne? Uh, yeah. And he's like, what's going on? What? You know, and he then, sees ball sack in the corner. He's like, that motherfucker. <laughs> did got it me, again. Got me again, that old rascal. How many new, unique Women are coming to the jazz club because he's got like a new woman. He is every fucked. Fucking and this, day. Uh, throughout this movie, he's fucked every woman in LA. <laughs> every single one of them. I mean, if you do a 50 50, there's 2,500 potential. Right. And then in his age group, there's probably only like, let's call it 1,000, 12,000, 1,200. So he's, he's got them all. So Nick's like, hey, I know that the captain told us not to fuck with Pogue. Let's go fuck with Pogue. Let's go talk to him. Whatever, you're, you're the boss. So they, just, they go to the hospital. We see our elderly hitman on a, a, a much like face off. He's on another fucking building. Or no, he's on the, he's on the top of the building. He's scaffolding. He's, 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 he's yeah, doing a ninja he move. He repels. Yep. He's repelling down. Cause, because remember, the door is being guarded by some real cops. Exactly. And we know this because outside of the door, we see them trying to negotiate a deal to go inside right. and see They're Paul. They're offering up Vinny's to the cops. Like, look, I love Vinny as much as the next guy, but the captain told us to keep you up. Frank said, you can do it on my uh, mouthpiece. And like, they're just like, like that's, you know, It's tempting, but no. I've got a pocket full. He did the raincoat thing where he had, you know, like jazz cigarettes just coating it. Because he's on vacation. Right. All yeah. right. Yeah. Um, all right, they make him uh, uh, specifically show you that he has a silencer on his gun. So he goes. Chow, chow, chow. They hear the silencer gun, which is accurate, though. In real life, it is, but in and movies, also the glass in, breaking. In, in movies, it's not accurate, right? But yeah, so they run in. They fucking shoot the fucking uh, the assassin. Yeah, he slides down slowly, slides down in his repelling gear. And they're like, "Fuck! We lost our only fucking league. Cause Pogue is dead now. The 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 assassin's dead. So next thing you know, we're at the Emmys. Quincy's there. We get a little uh, little Vinny's mansion. He's like, anybody want some pastrami <laughs> and, uh, and nacho cheese on me? Nope. You know, we we we're going home. Oh, this is where they get finally hit with it because yeah. they were at the hospital. Kaminsky comes in to inform them. Look, guys." We're, we're, you, you just can't be on the streets for the next two yeah. weeks. So this is where they okay. get hit. And Kaminsky is the one who delivers the good, bad news to them that they're going to be off the streets. So now yeah. they're on their two weeks vacation. So they, they learn who the assassin is. We don't need to know. I don't know why this scene is here. Besides Kaminsky saying, you're suspended. Yeah. And now we're going. It, we were just at a night scene. And now we're in the middle of the day. But it's supposed to be one single fucking shot. They're leaving. They're just driving around. They're lamenting. Well, they were waiting for the M.E. to do his thing. Okay, so okay. maybe it's the morning. Okay. Had a couple cups of coffee, you know, had an omelet or That's two. That's why they didn't eat Vinny's. You don't eat Vinny's in the morning. That's not a good breakfast. You don't eat Vinny's in the morning? No, no. What is the only dinner food you would eat in the morning? I'd eat any dinner food in the morning, oh, but okay. I'm not a cop. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you would eat Vinny's in the morning? Yeah. Well, oh. Vin, no, Vinny's, you tell you, that's an all-day experience. You've got to prepare for Vinny's. Right. Take a colon cleanse. <laughs> you're like, cause you, don't want, you don't want anything in your system but a Vinny's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it goes right through you. We know that. It's goes, just like, it's goes like, in like heaven, comes out like hell. It's like preparing that. for surgery. You yeah. just stop eating for eight hours before. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's the whole okay. thing. It yeah. is the whole thing. So now it's the morning. They're driving around aimlessly. Nick just happens to pull into like a church parking lot. He's like, that's Malcolm. Yeah. I got to go fuck with him some more. Go yeah. bash his face into another wall, tell him about how he went to high school again or something. I don't well, know. He didn't go to school. With oh, no, I'm he thinking. Of, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so they follow him into like a mausoleum, and we see uh, Malcolm. Got, there's an urn, and he's pulling some drugs out. This is how they, they do their drugs here. They, they, they've moved up. First it was carnival shit. Now it's now it's cemetery shit. Right. Yeah. So Malcolm goes in. And he, we know it's drugs because Malcolm puts his pinky in, rubs his gum. He he does the quick prayer as right. well. And they're just sitting there watching it. This is another scene where you notice how fucking ridiculous Ballsack is. He's already got his gun out. He's right. already got his gun out. They know everything Malcolm's capable of. He's already handled Malcolm multiple times, and yet he still has his gun out. He wants to kill somebody. It's the first thing he always has to do. 
So, of course, they catch him red-handed. Yeah. Uh, ball sack gets in there. He's like, what do you got here? He gums a little himself. Well, he grifts the urn. He grifts the he's urn. He's pulling all this shit out. Yeah. And then he pulls out this bag. <laughs> like, Clown hanky. <laughs> we point out, like, we've, we've done a lot of movies with drug deals. Yes. And we, <laughs> this is the, these are the worst drug deals. They literally have their drugs in Ziplocs. Because we know we've seen them. They're always nicely, like, taped up. And, you know. These weren't even double seal locks. <laughs> no. You know? These are work. fucking singles. Because <laughs> we know you have to. Th- what you have to do is put them in uh, some plastic with tape because yeah. you got to pull out your switchblade and cut the plastic yes. and then taste it. It's like. It's like uh, this is uh, like they, they got like lick 'em sticks, like basically <laughs> for their cocaine. <laughs> lick 'em sticks. <laughs> uh, fun dips. Yeah, and that's actually candy dips. <laughs> because it's funny because Nick pulls out a lick 'em stick. Puts it into the bag, <laughs> tests it. He's like, what? He is a child, so he would yeah. have that. And he's like, what is this shit? It's my mom's ashes, dude. Your mom tastes like shit. All right. So now that they're on two weeks, like we were saying earlier, we fucked it up. We, we're going to get the timing right now. Uh, <laughs> they take them to their favorite abandoned building. <laughs> Where they love to torture people. Uh, but like yeah. you said, we lost like 8,000 people yeah. uh, from the earthquake. Yeah. So, of course, there's going to be some abandoned shit. Right. This is a abandoned athletic club. Yeah, abandoned athletic club. So they take Malcolm there, they chain him up Jesus style over a fireplace that someone wrote, "Let's roast marshmallows," <laughs> yeah. with some anarchy symbols. Yeah, like it was, it was I, I hate when anarchists show up and roast marshmallows at your establishment. It's, the worst. it's just the worst. So we learn that Malcolm gets high on his own supply because he's a junkie. We see they show the track marks. Yeah, Balzac pulls up his uh, pulls up his sleeve and sees the the train tracks and our uh, train <laughs> tracks. <laughs> choo choo. <laughs> Black Tar Express. And they're like, wow, you're looking. Th- and it's been like literally like an hour since he's shot up, so he's like Jones and already. Oh yeah. And like, wow, I guess you need a little hit there. And he's like, fuck you, pig. I'm not saying anything. So we get then fucking Nick doubles down. He's like, I'm going to play you a little tune I wrote. Yeah. So shit, if you're going through withdrawals and having to listen to some acoustic guitar, you're in hell. So this becomes their thing. This is what started um, like the whole Gitmo Bay torture techniques and all that is that it was it was Nick here. Ballsack started. Robert Carradine. The human being was like, you know how a good way to torture people is with awful fucking music and blared at them. So they, 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 they torture him all day. And then he finally breaks. He oh, yeah. Needs, he needs that sweet heroin. Oh, yeah. And they're like, look, man, I just know, all I know is there's a fucking on the docks. There's a deal going down. And I don't know who's behind the, the, the hit on Polk, but he's big, man. He's big. Oh, well, by the way, there's a hit on you, Balsack. You're number one with a bullet. He had to sh- shout out this, the title of the movie. Yep. So we learned that, you know, somebody's big behind this. We got thing. our next lead. Yep. And it's at the docks tomorrow. Of, of course, it's at the docks. And of course, it's tomorrow. And they have a nice little baggie of black tar heroin, and they're mocking him with it. They give it to him. He's so fucking weak at this point because they didn't give him any chocolate bars. They didn't give yeah. him any fucking orange juice, no coffee. Oh. And so he can't even open the Ziploc bag. Right. And we were talking about these aren't even like double lock. These right. are static sealed. It right. should be very easy. You yeah. could blow them open. They're harder actually to close than open. That's yeah. How it is. Yeah. And he can't get them open. Ballsack takes it away, shoves it into his ass, farts it into his face, and is oh. like, well, how did you blow that asshole? We also learn that there's a mole in the precinct. That's how DeCosta keeps getting away with this shit. That's right. So, okay, we got everything plant out there. So next day, Nick, he finally got that dinner date with Teresa. Or did he? Did he barge in again and just demand that she go out with him? Well, here's what happened, Murray. So we're thinking we're going straight to the docks. No, this movie is not that fluid. We still need to know how Nick's doing with his ex-wife that he is stalking, abusing, wiping blood all over his house. Uh, Just like telling her she can't live the life uh, happily. She has to live with him and there's no choice. So he shows up, but you know what? He's not wearing flannel anymore. No, he's not. He doesn't have. He didn't show up to the door with a beer with the Coke label on it. No, he showed up in a suit and tie. Well, I think he had jeans on still, but he had a jacket and a tie on. And she's just like, "Nick, is that is that you? Is there a bulge in your pants?" 
Do you have your balls back? I yeah, think- I do. Because I'm thinking, I'm re- I'm thinking about quitting. Oh, I've heard that one before. No, seriously, I'm I I got a lead. I'm gonna get to Costa, and then I'm done. I'm done, baby. And I'm done taking you to the bar. I'm gonna take you to someplace. So we're not going to Dave and Buster's. No, no more Dave and Buster's. No ski ball. You know I get crazy about ski ball. You know how I fucking just drop trial all over that fucking (laughs) ski ball machine. I I I, I'm territorial when it comes to (laughs) ski ball. Like no one can touch the lucky bro. (laughs) The lucky lady. (laughs) Okay, so she's just like, all right, you got that, you got that glint in your eye. I love it. I believe you this Uh, time. Tonight we'll go out tonight. And now we're going to cut over to Frank. And, you know, this is just a cool-off period, you know? we got to understand our characters a little better. Yeah. So Frank, in the middle of nowhere, in a bunch of abandoned warehouses and everything, is doing Tai Chi. Yeah, he's making a lemon, lemonade out of lemons because he could just be pouting. But he's like, no, I'm going to get in touch with the inner Frank. So he's doing Tai Chi. He's very mature. He's at the local Y doing the Tai Chi, finishes up. He's even got, like, his special guy, Gi on. He's yeah. all in, man. Yeah, he had the full uh, wardrobe on. So they wrap up. He's feeling just at one with the fucking universe. And when you know you hit that exuberance, you, when you're just that high on life, you get out your little uh, trumpet mouthpiece. He's walking to his car. <laughs> just thinking Chuck Mangione. He's feeling it. <laughs> Hops into his car, <laughs> and he starts driving, but he's just... Blaring. That was that was a, f- a flu- 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 flugelhorn <laughs> mouthpiece. <laughs> he is he has every he has every mouthpiece to every brass instrument. Sometimes he's got the tuba. He's, yeah. he's got it all. It's yeah. awesome. And his armrest, he just lifts it up and it's just uh, lined with it. No, just, he has a special case. He had a special case too, but you know, lined with velvet, lined with velvet, all the mouthpieces. A uh, uh, Fra- Frank and Tash case. Oh man, that's nothing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Frank and Tash case. Yeah, there we go. But so he's so just into his own world. He's so at peace with the world. He's not noticing the giant headlights beaming through his car. The Pork Chop Express. As they dri- the Pork Chop Express <laughs> as they dr- oh, drive through the fucking alleys of China, little China, <laughs> because they're in those tight corridors. Yeah. Where the fuck is this Tai Chi gym at? <laughs> oh, yeah, outskirts of town. Exactly. So, What's well, in Little China? It makes sense. Tai Chi. Right. What's Egg doing? The leading yeah, Tai Chi? Egg Shed. Oh, man. And so, of course, the truck hits hits uh, Frank. And Frank's like, oh, this guy's very serious. I better go faster now. <laughs> hits the gas. and Frank's still a cop. He can just stop and go, what the fuck are you doing? He's got a gun on him. But he's like, I'm going to play it cool. Serenity now. Serenity now. So he starts driving. He gets cut off by another semi. Fucking Lincoln Hawk semi. Yeah. And then they're like they're like leading him into this toward this junkyard. It's a junkyard, yep, a car, you know, wreckage and everything. And so he gets a put right under a machinery. It's one of those giant magnet yeah. machineries. So he has to jump out of his car just as the fucking just thing. In the nick of time. He, I don't know. Why, I guess because well, yeah, what was weird was one of the guys in the truck just takes off and runs away. Yeah, I guess so. Because for some reason, I don't know why Frank didn't go out in the driver's side. He goes out the passenger side. But I guess it's because the other guy with the truck was on the other side. So maybe he had a gun. Maybe he just knew that this would work to his advantage because it did. Yes, because the magnet goes down and crushes his car, picks it up. They think he's in it at this time. So Frank, I think he kills the semi driver in the other car, right? Uh, I don't remember how he gets the semi truck driver. I know he gets the guy operating the, uh, like the crane. He shoots him. Oh, you're right. He does. And then he gets into the crane, I thought. Yes, you're right. Okay. And then he uses uses the magnet to destroy the semi with the driver in it. Yeah. So we see it crushes. It's blood splattered everywhere. Frank's just smiling. He's like, I just ruthlessly murdered a guy. Man, he. I I thought he was like this calm, you know, inner peace type, like let's all be wonderful to each other. No, he's a fucking cold blood murderer. Well, you got to be to be a partner with Ballsack. That's true. Let's talk about Ballsack a little bit more. Yeah. So they didn't go to Frank and uh, Dave and Buster's. They went to the mini golf. <laughs> That's classy for ball set. What the fuck? This is a mini golf course, and they're yeah. dressed to the nine. Well, nines, you know, they're dressed to the fours. To the fours. <laughs> Four and a half. Yeah, Four, Four and, and a half. half? Okay. Four point five. Okay. Okay. And, and, and they're mean, leaving, and we're they're, they're they're vibing, man. I think she's he's he's really telling the truth. I think he's gonna quit. Right. 
so he's hitting her with his best lines. Why don't we go home and I rip off your drawers and fuck you? And she's just like, God, you're such a romantic. Could you say that a little bit? Well, no, she's like, oh, wow. I was like, well, how about this? How about I get some champagne, chocolate covered strawberries, rip off your white cotton panties, and fuck you like the whore that you are? And she's like, now you're talking. She's like, I got them right there. They're all dried out. They're ready to go. So he's like, oh, shit. I forgot. I actually left for a tip. I got to get that. <laughs> so I'll be back. You go start warm the car. He, he pulls a George Costanza. Right. Shit. I had a, I had a 20 Because he minutes. put the tip down to make it. This, this was it. He was still trying to get Teresa. So he, he put like a 20 down for a tip. And Are you like, sure he wasn't trying to get an extra ba- uh, like a basket of breadsticks? No. So he left a five and then. He knew. But now that he sealed the deal, he knew he was going to fuck Teresa. He's like, I got to go back. And she he, she laughed at my fuck joke. That means. He knows he's getting laid. So he's like, I can take the, the tip back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what he did. He went oh, back. Oh, my to credit get- card <laughs> is in there. He paid in cash. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, but they stole my credit card. Yeah, so he's like, "Warm up the car, I'll be back, baby." Yeah, you warm up the car. You sit in there, keep it warm, keep it warm. and oh my gosh, she goes to fucking start the car. She doesn't even know how to open a car no. because you know, Ballsack's car is just like wired up with explosives and everything. Right. So she goes in there. She doesn't know how to open it. She fucking triggers the bomb. Right. She had it coming. Right. And Nick probably should have reminded her how to open his car. And we've. I was assuming she was going to be dead. No, she didn't, she's not killed. She's just blown back. No, very much like uh, I, I we did a movie forever ago where somebody got horribly burned and they had like a tiny little like scar over their head. It was just like a, a scab rather. That was that was what happened to Teresa. So now uh, it's personal. But but here's the thing we were getting at earlier, and we're going to loop it back. We're going to do a good job of storytelling here because we talked about how they found the <laughs> pictures. Yet, but yeah. What's that? Oh yet. yeah, I know. No, we've gone. <laughs> all hey, you fun. guys got a lot of short episodes the past few weeks. So yeah, you, you, you get you get a bear nice with long us. One. You, yeah. you get a cath worthy one. Yeah. Uh, because we were talking about earlier how they got the pictures of Teresa out of his drawer, and so it's like, okay, there's going to be hit out on Teresa. This was not intended for Teresa. No, this was intended for Balsack. Yeah. Rank and Balsack were supposed to die this night. Exactly. So. Nothing about getting Teresa plays into anything. No, like there was no reason for the scene with Poe going in there. So we could have cut ten minutes off. Yeah. Go on Globus Theater. It would have been a nice ninety minute movie if they'd cut that scene. Or rather, Go on Globus. They kind of lost themselves in nineteen eighty seven. Apparently, yeah, this, is what, this is what killed Go on Globus. Or fucking Carradine was just like, I'm gonna do whatever I want. My name's Robert Carradine. I was in Revenge of the Nerds. I raped a girl in Revenge of the Nerds and got away with and it. She liked it. She. Didn't just like it. She loved it. She bragged about it across campus. So she's in the hospital now. She's just, like you said, she's got this little, little like, cut on her forehead. She just fucking bomb up in her face. Yeah. She's got a little cut. Ron, and a Ron little Garvin sold it oh, better than her. A little bruising around her eye. Yeah. Nick's, uh, you, Nick actually shows a little bit of compassion. He goes in there. He's like, I'm supposed to fuck you tonight. And now the doctors tell me I can't whip my dick out here. Horrible, horrible when that happens. Kaminsky shows up, and he's like, hey, there's that big deal at the docks. Aren't they on vacation now? Or or was he just, oh, I I guess what it was is he's the guy that's like, you didn't hear it from me, but I know you want the Costa. It's a big drug deal going down. It seems like what he's doing is the typical, like, guys, I know through the normal means that we're supposed to do our police work, hands are tied. But you guys, you're on vacation. You can do this. Right. Yeah. You can do it if it's not you're on vacation. Exactly. So, yeah, the next day we're at the docks. And they're just sitting there in their car, and they notice a limo. And they're like, that looks strange. Why would a limo be at the docks? So Frank gets out to, like, talk to some of the people and pretend like he blends in and everything. I don't even remember why Frank got out, but he got out. Because I don't think at the time they thought the the limo had to – they noticed it, but they were like – he was like, Nick – I can't trust you, Nick. You're fucking wild. You're you're a loose cannon. Just watch that limo. It's strange. I'm gonna like investigate. So okay. I think he was gonna do that. So Frank gets out. That's literally two two seconds later. A, a truck cover goes and drives in front of the limo. 
And then it, and then it, it's like that the move where people like are standing on a street corner across the street, and then a bus goes by, and then they're yep. gone. Yep, that's what happens with the limo. The limo's gone. So fucking, he's like, "Fry, get the fuck in the car. We gotta get this limo." All right, so now we're chasing it down. They find well, it. No, they, they they chase. They they see. They don't chase the limo. They they're chasing uh, a semi. Right. They can't find the limo. They find a semi, and Frank's like, "Why are we chasing the semi?" Because the limo, I think it got in the semi. And apparently, I mean, when you see this, you think Knight Rider. Apparently, right. it has a tie to Knight right. Rider. Apparently, this this semi was the, the semi used in Knight Rider. I wonder, so it makes perfect sense that a car would go up inside of it. Now, is it is that like kind of like the thick lady of uh, the mechophilia world? Because, like, you know, you, of course the mechophiliacs are all about Knight Rider. But the car that Knight Rider gets into, do you think it's they almost, go for that? It's almost like having sex. Because <laughs> it's like Knight Rider is the penis, <laughs> and then the semis is the vagina, and they're going into it. They're penetrating. They're, yeah. So you think the mechophiliac would, would, would want to be in the in Knight Rider while it goes or, into... Or it depends on which, what your catcher or, receiver, or uh, pitcher. You might want Knight Rider to go into you. Oh, <laughs> Like, I don't know. I'm just going. I don't know this world, Griff. We don't. don't we know. don't. We're we're just putting it out <laughs> there for the, to bring this up. So I was actually talking to Jack about oh car fucking because Magnum PI came up on something, oh, yeah. and I was like, I just thought I was like, Jack, I love the fact that I threw that question at you, and you had an answer immediately. Yeah, immediately, and he was like, Hey, this this shit, I think I come goes through my head. Hey, he's creative. He yeah. wouldn't fucking shoot the tiger. He would think of a way to distract the tiger. <laughs> right. Yeah. Jack is a good person. Yeah. He's not gonna fucking kill a tiger. Right. Oh, my God. So we go inside of the trailer, and it just so happens that Ballsack is right. They're fucking in a car inside doing a drug they deal. They got the fucking baggies. Oh, my I God. Don't, I, get, I don't know why, but it irked me that they had, like, because they weren't even full. They I were know. like, it was it like seemed- something. It was like when, you, when you're a poor kid back in the day, and you just put Kool-Aid in a fucking plastic because <laughs> you couldn't afford, like, candy. That was your candy? Was just the Kool-Aid? This is new to me, Murray. Oh, this is some ghetto shit right here. Like, <laughs> Because you know they did had... you put sugar in it too? No, no, it was it was the the one that had the, the sugar. Oh, mixed okay, in. okay. Yeah, so it was like the Country Town lemonade mix. Yeah, okay. but it, what Kool Aid had that too? But oh, no, 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 oh, yeah, that was I... the worst. The fucking you didn't like that. The, no, I'm talking about the God. one where it's like you had to add sugar because yeah. it's just some bitter fucking shit. Oh man! But when you add the sugar, you added the <laughs> sugar. I mean, he poured some sugar. Oh, uh, pour some sugar. So DeCosta's in the back. He's got his, his Kinja Tache case with the drugs. They're doing. Yep. He's with Ty Charlie. His 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 connection. Ty Charlie, great name by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, god, the single lock bag. That would have been a great Al Young role. Yeah, I agree. And they're doing the deal, and they're they're rubbing it on their gums. They're loving it. They got one guy's got the lick'em stick. <laughs> He's just snorting it off the lick'em stick. <laughs> Everything seems to be going to plan. I mean, they're perfect, like fucking car in car Inception shit. It's working, and I'm surprised they didn't have the suitcase that opened up like Inception, and they all got knocked out. And then the drug deal within their like you know imaginations or whatever that was, the dream world or something. That would have been interesting. You know what would be really interesting? If Freddy Krueger was in, in, in that Oh, movie. my God. If Inception <laughs> featured Freddy Krueger. If they Kruger. just had a cameo. Like, you know, they love how, like, in, like, Star Wars, they love to have a cameo character in the background. Just Freddy Krueger yeah. walking. Yeah. If Disney got a hold of it, that's what Inception would have been. Christopher Nolan is one of those. It was Nolan, right? Yeah, it was Nolan. Yeah, he's one of those guys who gets to do whatever he fuck he wants. Right. So Probably not anymore, because I think. Ten, it so sounded bad. like it didn't do that well. Yeah. But it was one of those movies that came out like in the midst of the right, pandemic yeah. and you didn't know. But right. whatever. Guys, we're so fucking. <laughs> yeah, my God. God. We're almost gone. We're, we're, we're almost, almost gone. gone. We're, we're almost we're, gone. We're, we've been gone for about an hour. We've been gone almost this whole gone. episode. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey it's, it's New Year's. All we, right. So outside of the vehicle, there's so much action happening. Of course, these people inside the truck know what's happening, but they have no fucking clue, apparently. Yeah. So they're trying to pull over the car. It's not working out so yeah, well. You got a fucking guy in the passenger, the shotgun seat with the shotgun, wearing a nice big old. He stole it from Ken Kazugi, his nice L.A. Dodgers hat, floating on his head, Lauren Avedon stuff. And he's just got this shotgun, and he's like pointing it out the window. And they're just like, "Why would?" Anyways, they eventually get in a gunfight with these yeah. people. They kill Dodgers guy by shooting him in the head, right. and you see a cap go off <laughs> yeah. in the cap, which was fun. Uh, so the driver pulls over, gets out, and of course they like cuff him or whatever. 
And then Ballsack goes up to the back, bangs on the back right. of the door, and then gets down immediately. And they un they, they unload with like their Uzis right. inside the car outside of the truck bed. And so Ballsack's like, oh, we got him right where I want him. I knew they were in there. So Ballsack's like, I'm going to drive this motherfucker. Frank says, do you even know how to drive this? I think I know a thing or two. I'm, I'm, I've been protégéing under Ron Garvin four hours <laughs> so, a week, motherfucker. Not only can he fly a plane, he can drive a semi. He can, he can do drive everything. a plane, and he can drive a semi. So they call ahead to the police station. They drive to the police station. The, all the cops are waiting. They, you know, ball sack's got a big old shit eating grin on his face. He's he's wait, he's gonna rub it in the co- uh, the captain's face. He's holding court right now. He's standing on top of the car. He's fucking f- full mass right now, and he's just calling it up. He's got everybody surrounding the truck. Uh, guys, why don't you go ahead and open up and come out with your hands up? Put the guns down. We're surround. We've got you surrounded. Doors fly open. The one guy actually has his gun. He puts it down, and they're just, like, celebrating. All the cops, and they're just like, that's fucking Arnold. And then this guy <laughs> crawls out of the back of the car. Ty Charlie. Is that Ty fucking Charlie? <laughs> and they pull out, like, their baseball card with him <laughs> on it, his stats. Like he made for an autograph. He made 45 drug deals under our nose just in January alone. Apparently, m- maybe uh, DaCosta had... A teleportation device because somehow he magically disappeared from the back of this uh, truck. So, like, no DaCosta and fucking Ferris. He's like, I told you, motherfucker, DaCosta's not. And so now we're like thinking, oh my God, Ferris is involved with this. And so DaCosta Kaminsky guy. comes in there and he's trying to talk Nick down because Nick's, of course, disappointed as fuck. He's, you know, he's doing the Nick thing. He's. He's going up to the finger blast. He's dipping his balls and just slapping all over the place. He's like, Ball Nick, prints. I see. I see you're really upset. You ball print everything when you're upset. What's wrong, man? I mean, it's like, what are the black and whites doing? How do they know? Why do they show up so quickly? Black and whites. Well, shout out to Ginty, I think. And then Kaminsky's like, maybe it's the captains involved. He throws that out there. Yeah, because they knew about the leak, and they're like, it's got to be Ferris. It's got to be Captain Ferris. Ferris Bueller. He's a rapscallion. Maybe our captain's a rapscallion. Maybe he's working with... So Nick, being the, the piece of shit he is, is like, maybe Teresa's still in a coma. Maybe I could fuck her while she's in a coma. Maybe I could tell the doc- like pull the plug on somebody else so all the attention goes to that person and I can sneak in and fuck my lady. She she consented two days ago before she right. went to this co- exactly. coma. That's and his... that's, a, that's a deal. Yeah. That's a deal. That's nerd logic. Yeah, that's... God, how did this come back around? To he's gonna go get his Darth Vader mask, yeah. and he's gonna oh. he's gonna go down on her. Yeah, he's like, if I he's like, yeah, if I go down on her, because I don't guys don't go down on women, so it's like I'm doing some I'm doing her a favor. Yeah, it's not rape because I'm not getting off. Yeah, until I am getting off. Until I am. He's doing some mental gymnastics. He's fucking you know, like. What's a fam- I'm trying to think of a f- <laughs> who's the famous uh, gymnast gymnast. I can't think of one. <laughs> Biles was that that chick that, that chick? Simone Biles. Simone Biles. Yeah, yeah. he's doing some Simone Biles shit in his brain. Best in the world, right there. Yeah. Poor girl, she's got vertigo or something. Hey, but the doctor's like, no, sorry, she came out of the coma, but she cannot be seen. So he's like, fuck, I'll just leave, and I'll fucking take it out all my sexual ag- aggression on DaCosta. <laughs> so he goes to DaCosta. Goes up to the intercom at the gate, starts doing some fucking Edgar Allan Poe, the Raven in there. Yeah, that was awful. You should have done some Doubtfire, Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello! But he decided to quote the Poe. Yeah, that was pro- that was probably another Robert Carradine thing. He's like... Oh, it definitely yeah. was. Uh, guys, I went straight method. I broke into a few he, ritual but he, houses. But he, he's like, I'm going to do some Shakespeare, and then he did some Edgar Allan Poe. That's how stupid he is. Hey, but, he's no John D. Hart. But, uh... <laughs> no, he's not. And so one of the guards was like... I love Edgar Allan Poe. I'm going to go check out what's going on there. there. So I, we point out, it's a compound. The walls are five feet high. That's it. That's Nick, it. Nick had to duck down to hide behind the wall. Yeah. He could have literally just stepped over the wall. If you have the laser dispersion, Robert Carradine is only 4'11", so they did have to get somebody to go under there on hands and knees so he could get boosted <laughs> up. But that's a laser dispersion, so you won't see that. You're going to watch the YouTube version that's free. So, yeah, so he could just leap over. No, he instead of leaping over, he does this ruse with his his Edgar Allan Poe shit. The guy opens the gate, knocks the guard out, sneaks up into the house. Uh, okay, so 
the Costa's lady. He, she sleeps on the porch when uh, DaCosta doesn't want her. She's like a dog, basically, an outside a, dog. Okay, it was a very beautiful, like, Florida room or just sunroom, sun room, I think is what you would uh, normally call that. She's in lingerie. Yes. Lying on a bed, watching a tiny TV. Yeah. While, well, come on, it was 87. And while our bodyguard's watching it with her. Yeah. And uh, our boy, uh, Ballsack, he's not my boy. Ballsack <laughs> shows up with a gun, gets a drop on him. Tells the lady, you know, hey, uh, can you take these handcuffs? Uh, handcuff that guy to, uh, uh, it's like, it was like a pillar or some shit. Yeah, it was like, like a tiki pillar. She's all into it. She she loves the skank. Oh no, shit. she likes the she likes the commanding voice. She right. she really likes commanding voice. Yeah, Ballsack really comes in again. This is a direct a Robert Carradine directed scene here because she she she's in there with the. That's long, why I demanded she be in lingerie. Yeah, with her long eighties ass, and he's just. Uh, <sighs> Telling her what to do, and she's just like, "Oh my god, yes!" Her hair is just huge, fucking huge, it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's telling her exactly what to do. And again, it was Wolf and Ilsa kind of vibe because she was really liking all the direction. So handcuffed her. Where's your sugar daddy? Oh, just right through the door, sir. Yeah. Well, you didn't handcuff her. She was cool with it. She's like, "Oh yeah, yeah." Oh, yeah no, just... I'm sorry. I, I meant the guy. Well, she but... actually says, "Like you know, hey, when you're done with this, why don't you like see me yeah. or something like that?" She start she started cornering him. It's like, "Is that a bulge in your pants, or do you have no balls?" And he was like, oh, "I'm just happy to see you." I didn't have a bulge in no balls. <laughs> <laughs> or you weren't supposed to point out the logic of whatever that mess I just uttered was. Okay. Okay. So we got. Oh, we got. We got. We got to wrap, like, uh, uh, wrap this. This is like. How are we not have a guest now? This is such a like a train wreck guest episode. It really is. Like, uh, uh, so he barges into Decosta's bed. Decosta's sleeping. He puts a gun to his face. He jumps up. You know, he's got Standing the root of the him. shotgun in his crotch because he really wants this penetration. The root of the shotgun, <laughs> <laughs> not the barrel. <laughs> This episode. Uh, yeah. oh. I, I don't blame you guys if you just turn this shit off. But so yeah, he, he threatens Decosta, and then he stops. He's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna let you live." Because the guy, you know, I don't, I didn't get this scene. Why did he leave? I have no fuck. It's because he, I did. He throw cop logic on him. Was that it? Was he just like, "Oh, I know you don't have me dead to rights. Your hands are tied." And so Nick's like, "Yeah, you're right. My balls are in a vice." I'm gonna get out of here. He wanted to like Batman fuck with them. Okay. Okay. I, I believe so it. Nick fucks off to his Batman cave. He goes back to the abandoned his, his, his uh, brooding cave. Yeah. yeah, his brooding cave. He's got his guitar. He's gonna sing out some Beatles. I know it's your birthday. It's my birthday too. Yeah. Well, that was Paul McCartney solo. Oh, was it? Yeah. I thought it was a Beatles song. No. Oh, okay. Anyways. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was. Anyways. Oh, no, it wasn't. Because <laughs> that was that was the I'm gonna get another tangent. That was that was the beauty of Lennon and McCartney because Paul McCartney was such a sellout bitch. He couldn't like he's writing. He wanted to write his own Christmas song and he wanted to write a song that would rival Happy Birthday because he wanted to make money. He wanted that to be the new Happy Birthday song. Yeah. And then Lennon was so up his own ass. He's like, I'm gonna change the world with my music. <laughs> so they were the perfect melding of like sellout and like up your own ass okay. kind of guys. So that's that's why the Beatles work so well. Yeah. They, they balanced each other out. All right. So, uh, where are we? Oh, we're talking Beatles. Uh, you know, that last <laughs> album really got me. Yeah, because there's, Apparently, there's a, there's a documentary out Eight there. Eight Hours yeah, by not, Peter Jackson. Yeah, yeah, it's man. actually just them talking over Lord of the Rings, which was oh, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. There was a rumor that the Beatles were supposed to do a Lord of the Rings. Yeah, movie. I did hear yeah. that. Check that documentary out. So, he's brooding. He's at his brood cave. Fucking, he's just... And then Frank just, like... Has had enough. He's had it up to here, and I'm pointing my hand above my head. That's how high it is. That's it's so high. He's like, "Look, you fucking piece of shit. We've been through all this shit. I'm on vacation. You, I'm not getting laid. You're ruining my life. You're fucking with my food all the time. Always. Don't give up on me now, motherfucker. We're getting to Costa. You know, one of our own has set us up. Don't you want to fucking get to the bottom of this? We'll get the Costa. We'll get it all. We'll do it all in a blaze of glory. It's gonna be fucking amazing. Eh." I don't know. I'm working on this new riff. It's going to replace Mariah Carey's Christmas song. Apparently, she makes like $20 million a year or something off that song. It's so much fucking money. It's ridiculous. So the plan, they, they got. he's like, hey, maybe if I get my mom involved with the plan, she'll get off my ass. So they, they get the mom involved. They go to the police station. Yeah. We're bringing back a joke. 
they actually did bring back something they set up earlier. Not Teresa, but Kettle Bomb. Yes. What was she? She's. I don't know what she was. What was she pretending to be? Like a, a lawyer, I thought. Okay. Okay. Like a, to, uh, yeah, what a lawyer. So she wanted to know some information on this Ira Kettle Bomb, which they were bringing it back. Yup, bringing it back. There was also a, a, there's a lot of callback jokes because there's like they do the thing I told you where Billy D mumbles and then Ferris goes what? Yeah. There's also the joke where people yell freeze and they go why are you yelling freeze? Nobody ever freezes. Yeah, that was that was Balzac's yeah, move. Yeah, he was yeah. like, why did you tell him to freeze? No one free. Oh my god. Okay, we got. So, yeah, we're so close. Yeah. We're so close, everybody. Yeah, we're, we're almost there. All right, so. She's distract, basically distracting the evidence room guy. Yeah, and she's giving him the wrong name, and she's like, "I didn't tell you kettle bomb. I told you nettle bomb." Are you listening to me? She's pulling Karen energy here. Right. It's very good. very good. And then these guys come in with Casey, Bubba, Casey, bubblegum shrimp. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "We got to get this guy to the evidence." Ah, he bit me. <laughs> Charlie bit me. Why did they need to get him to the evidence room? I have no fucking clue. None we of have this, to question him in the evidence room. None of this makes sense. But the thing is about the guard is he's like, oh, I understand the <laughs> evidence room. Because he gets his nightstick out. Oh, so that's the implication is. They're they, going to Rodney. Yeah. Wait, not Rodney they take, Dangerfield him. They're going <laughs> to. Rodney King them? Rodney King him. Yeah, that's where they take him. It to is beat L.A. The, that's where they take him to beat the shit. It was a couple years prior to Rodney exactly. King. Exactly. Yeah, so they take him to the Evid- I'm using hair quotes. Evidence room to beat the shit out of. Okay, I and it's it. in here that they're going to use Casey because he's a crack at cracking cases. I mean, saves. Uh, saves. But because Balsack is such a fucking masochist, he's like, you need to scream while you do it, boy, or he's I'll a, put this. He's such up. a sadist, not a masochist. Oh, excuse yeah. me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I got that mixed up. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Murray. Anyone who would hang with Balsack is a masochist. Okay. Okay. Yes. So yeah, he he's such a fucking sadist. You gotta scream, boy. Oh, you need to scream for me. And he's doing gold. And then dust Casey's gestures. like, oh. I know you ain't heard shit, but brothers don't go for that shit anymore. We ain't gonna scream. Yeah, Frank says one word <laughs> and then he turns the other cheek. <laughs> I felt really bad for Casey here. Yeah. Like this poor kid. He's yeah. doing the Lord's work in here. He's helping them crack this case. And they're he, like Paul Sack's like, I'm gonna penetrate you <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Oh. We got to make it sound real. So, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and he's like bashing him with the fucking stick every once in a while when he doesn't scream the way he likes it. Scott fucking Balsack. Robert Carradine. I'm so glad your career died. <laughs> so they crack the safe, and it's the evidence room where they keep all the drugs. So this is a room full of drugs. And Casey's like in heaven. He's like, holy shit. Yeah. This yeah. is Mama Jamma. This is Calvin he's Johnson's He's rubbing thread. everything on his gums. This what, is Bob weed? Seger weed. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just you know they're like hey asshole you don't touch any of this shit i think he pocketed probably a little bit of it yeah so now they got this briefcase and whatever they needed this briefcase it's like the ultimate it was, it, i have no, no idea you were what it was okay it was ty charlie's briefcase they had the money okay so i don't know why they kept the money in with the drugs but who knows who cares anyways so they're gonna go get ty charlie because they had him locked up how are they gonna do Oh, uh, they did the ruse again. They're just been the same ruse, mom. You got to do it again. <laughs> I need Ty Charla bomb. <laughs> so yeah, they said put a gun to Ty Charlie's head and have him call DeCosta on a payphone. DeCosta's like, I still want to do the job. Do you want? I got the money. Do you got the drugs? DeCosta's like, I got the drugs. Well, meet me at the uh, re- the abandoned men's health club on whatever, whatever. Two o'clock. So now this is, we're near the end, people. Sweet, sweet end. We go to the... the, the oh, hold on. <laughs> One of... Okay, first of all, I saw you in this scene because our big goon, DaCosta, he's working out in his lifting room. He's still got a babe in lingerie <laughs> watching him while she's reading a magazine. Right. He's in his mesh tank top, I just imagine, Murray, and it's like late 20s, mesh tank top all the time. <laughs> I see you going. I'm glad you brought back to the scene because I love the everything scene. about the scene was amazing. The, the uh, goon picks it up. It's like my name's Monty. Like he makes sure to like. Yeah, you know. I don't know. This scene I'm was- not just a goon. I have a name. It's Monty. I don't know why I love that scene. It was just, it was very. He also points out he's Monty in the scene where he gets handcuffed. I, I maybe it's because it felt very David Lynch. You had a woman in lingerie. Dave Lynch loves doing that. Then you had a character who's like. I'm Monty, and you should know this. And mirrors and light. It's just everything about it. Anyways, so now we got all these players involved. Monty makes a call. You want your cut? You be there. Right. Who's this? 
It's got to be our inside fucking rat, Murray. Right. So now we're at the abandoned athletic park. Athletic park. The club. And all the guys are coming together. We got Ty Charlie. We got, got the Costa. Costa and we then got our suddenly, boy. Ferris walks in. Captain right. Ferris. We knew it. We knew Ferris was the fucking leak, Griff. It's finally coming to fruition. Finally. Ferrition. And... <laughs> So, uh, Ballsack and Frank, they jump out. They're like, all right, we did it. We solved the crime, baby. And, they're, you know, they're all upset. Wait, Dennis Miller was in this thing? <laughs> yeah, he's everywhere. He's all over this movie. He's punching it up. And so they're like, oh, my God. I knew it was Ferris the whole time. Frank, I told you they, it was Ferris. They pulled Ferris. off the fucking witch mask he was Oh, wearing. my God. Of course it's, like, it's a witch Ferris. mask. Oh, my God. You've been haunting the old abandoned uh, athletic <laughs> and club. And it, it, was, it was the Silver Shamrock witch mask. And so... Then all of a sudden, not so fast, boys. I mean, it's our boy Kaminsky, who we thought was was their boy, and he's no longer our boy. He's DaCosta's boy, and he's always been DaCosta's boy. I love you too. The jazz, the B, the Bob, uh, and you with your no ball sack. Oh my God, you guys were the best. I loved watching you work. But hey, I'm DaCosta's guy. I'm gonna get you, suckers. Now, what happens here? How do they get? Pass. Did he hit uh, the Kaminsky? Hey, look over there. <laughs> and then they fight back. <laughs> and this is the worst Starsky and Hutch ending, most limp dick ending to any fucking movie. So DeCosco runs. Of course, when you're running away from somebody, you always run upstairs. Yep. That's, how you, that's how you escape. Upstairs. So he runs upstairs. Uh, Balsack follows him. Beats the, beats the shit out of Dikoski gets nothing in. He just beats the shit out of Dikoski. He, he like sweeps him while he's running, kicks his feet out. He catches up to him. Like nothing. Then gets him back up. He works the kidneys, which we never see. So that was oh, interesting. No. And then he uh, kicks a window out and goes to throw DaCosta out the fucking window. When Frank comes in, do, 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 do. <laughs> don't do that, brother. Do, 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 do. And he's like, stop. And then Balsack comes to his senses. He's about. To, he's like, I just wanted to show him like you know, the view. All right, so then they, they arrested DaCosta. Yep. Next day, we're at the, the police station. Huge. It's, it's almost like the bathroom of Class in 84. This huge, spacious. Huge. Just With two like, desks. And one file cabinet. Yeah. Like, and the captain came in and knew exactly where. Uh, where the yeah. boo. They keep yeah. the booze. Yeah, he pulls out some booze out of the file cabinet, pours some glasses for everybody. They do a little toast. Like, you guys did it. I never believed in you ever, but somehow you pulled it out. And then he goes to walk out, and then Frank does one last time. Cracker, 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 cracker. What'd you say? Uh, nothing, Chief. So then this, well, now we see that he's no, he's not wearing flannel anymore. Is he, is he wearing a suit, or is he still wearing his flannel? Uh, I thought he was turning over a new leaf. Yeah, I don't remember what he was wearing here, but yeah, you're right. He was and Frank's like, leaf. are you going to quit this? This is great, baby. I'm, one, I'm two weeks away from retirement. Like, nope, I promised Teresa. So he walks out. Teresa's there. He's going to be a private detective. Private though. dick. Mm. And they, they get in their car, and they just drive off That's into the it. sunset. And then we never saw Robert Carradine again. We drove off a cliff. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we might have to find out if Robert actually did anything else. Cause oh, I'm this sure he was, did, but This nothing. was Seagal-level arrogance. Yeah. He's the fucking war- Ginty, Seagal... He's awful. Uh, so I kind of am interested to see if he was awful in other movies. Speaking of awful, or maybe not awful, next week, I'm going to give him one more chance. All you Dolphin fans out there, we're going to do a, one more Dolph Lundgren movie. This is a movie I saw 30 years ago. It came out in 1990. I saw it. It's a sci-fi movie. You like sci-fi, don't you, Griff? I'm a big sci-fi fan. It's a little movie. When I saw it, it was called I Come in Peace, but apparently people in Europe know it as Dark Angel. So look for either one if you want to watch it. It's on Tubi under Dark Angel. So we're going to try one last time. Three strikes, you're out, Dolph. If you don't impress me with this one, I'm moving on. So we'll see you next week for that. Thank you for enduring this fucking marathon <laughs> episode, and keep it warm. A Golden Globus production. Another good one from Canon.